Oh, okay. Hello and welcome to our fortnightly live stream over here on YouTube and we thank you all for joining us. I'm just going to give you a few seconds because the feedback I got from my wife was they often play an advert straight at the start. Yes, so we've been told to <laughs> dial it back at the start, haven't we? So if you've skipped the ads, you're getting bonus footage here of us padding. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some great things coming up in tonight's show. We've also got that first overseas contestant because we're not counting the guy from Wales that did it over the border what, what, are we? what with it not being overseas, <laughs> overseas yeah <laughs> coming over we got him on the electrician's challenge we've got Chris Theobald taking it on so we need to find out where he's from we've also got which one of the uh, segments are you doing live this evening Joe it's a regulation corner and it's going to be a very quick change oh oh you're going to suit up as well oh. It's Regulation Corner. Oh, wow. You, you are putting right. yourself under some serious pressure. So a live Regulation Corner from Lineside Studios. And also we've got Gary Swap Shop and we've got the GT time, if you can guess the fastest time or closest to the fastest time that was correct for Theo's race. Yeah. Okay, I think that's enough of the intro waffle we should be away from. We're going to start with our subject. What's our subject all about today then? So tonight we're talking about apprentices and apprenticeships. Okay, and the question being... Is this the right time to take on an apprentice? So this is really aiming at the electricians predominantly and whether you're going to be making that decision. Why is it such a perfect time in a minute, Joe, to be considered taking one on? Well, I think we were in, in our sort of prep, we were referring to it as the, uh, the transfer window is open, haven't we? If it was football, it'd be transfer season because you've got all the, all the kids are finishing up at school. Perhaps some of them are starting to wonder what they're going to be doing with their lives post-summer. Uh, so now is, is the perfect time to be thinking about, is it time to take on an apprentice? And we've got... What might be quite a controversial opinion about that, we think, maybe. Oh, I like that controversial opinion. So, OK, so we've got that. That's a good opportunity to see people. But obviously, we did a little bit of a poll on YouTube yeah. and it got some mixed results. So your feedback that you're going to give us in the comments now, we're going to try and pull out some of those comments as we go through that can continue on with that um, poll that we did. So if I bring it in now to have a look at it and we have a quick flash it up onto the screen. Now, this is the point I can, I'm allowed to look at the screen. You are allowed to look at the screen at this point, Joe. Yeah. So we had 1.3 thousand uh, mm. people vote. So that's brilliant. 1,300 people took part in this poll. So that's a really good one. And as we yep. look at it, the number that jumps out to me is the one at the bottom there. And we'll, we'll try and address that as we go through, won't we, Joe? Yeah, it's one of those things. That it's, it's, it's a very, very interesting result. It's, it's kind of deeply fascinating to see that. Looking at the top, we can see some people are definitely thinking about it. About yes. a fifth of people are definitely thinking about it. A, a fifth are maybe if I can find the right persons, which to me is pretty much a yes. Yes. You get the right person. I like that one. Uh, and then we've got the, the, the rest of it. So that's over three fifths, over 60% of the people are a flat no. Yeah, they are. Okay, so we've been burnt before. Okay, so let's, yeah. try, and, let's try and undo the biggest number, the been burnt before thing. We said that the market looks good, the transfer market's open. Chelsea went into it today, didn't they? They picked themselves up a little striker from Man City. If you say so. So. Sterling? Yeah, Sterling came in. Yeah, well done for remembering that one. Yeah. So we've got that windows open and all of a sudden now you still want to put a little bit of security into it. What can we do as an electrician wanting to take on somebody but not get burnt again? So this is something we've discussed at length, isn't it? And something we always recommended to people when we were working at the college. If you're a bit nervous about taking on an apprentice, think about taking on someone for long-term committed work experience. Okay. So that's kind of what we think is probably the best option. It's probably the best option from a potential employer's point of view, yep. but also from a potential employee's point of view. Okay, that's good, because we used to say that it's the company and you're on trial. So the company yeah. are on trial from the person doing the work experience will got the job, and we flick it around to the other way around. So it might not work on both levels, but... If we're thinking about maybe somebody at 16, and, and it's odd now, isn't it, that people actually go into employment at 16, and we yeah. will come back to that, it could be that they're a little bit more mature and there's been some other things mm. gone in. Would you consider your 16-year-old self and your 20-year-old self being exactly the same person? Uh, completely different people, like worlds apart. You know, I think about when I left school at 16 and then the person that I became by the age of 20 and, you know, let's face it, since then, you okay. know, yeah. um, completely different people, you know, and... You know, I think it's, it's probably a little bit worrying that we, we try and make kids, essentially, yep. choose careers at 16. I'm not sure that's, that's such a great thing to do um, because it's, it's such a, a changeable age, isn't it? You know, you're going through a massive transition in your life. Yeah, um, I yeah, agree with difficult. that. Yeah. It is difficult. And, and we're going to talk about when we were 16 and we got apprentices, which was many moons ago when probably the world was a little bit different place. Yeah. And we'll do that later on in the plug and socket. And you've got some funny stories to lean into on that as well that we can have. And maybe I can share one or two of the ones that are PG rather than some of the other ones that I got up to during my apprenticeship. But also I'd say to anyone who's looking to take someone on, remember what you were like at that age. Yeah. So even if you take someone on who's 18, 19 or whatever, 
Remember what you were like. I'm sure you were a fitness freak who never drank alcoholic beverages and had many an early evening, and you'd expect the same from somebody you're paying their wages. It, it's one of those things we used, to, we used to say at the college, didn't we? It was, it was always, you know, they're their age. You know, yes. it, it, they're 16 years old. It's expected that, you know, they're yep. not going to be perfect at anything that they're doing, you know. Um, and you were that age once as well. You know, yep. I remember what you were like at that age. So by using that work experience model as the electrical contractor, okay, and maybe you take someone over the summer and just offer them a week, a day, maybe if it works out, you, you take them over that summer period, and you think to yourself, this is a good relationship starting to build. I still wouldn't be afraid of saying to them, maybe to continue on at college if they were there, maybe yeah. go on and do a level two or a level three if they've started mm -hmm. at level one or level two, or maybe saying, look, go to your local college, get yourself a year under your belt, and then you'll be made a decision whether you like it from the learning aspect, and I've got another year yeah. to work out whether you can turn up on time, work hard, and obviously yeah. do all the things that I expect from you. And a great example of that, go on, you go. That was say, or develop those skills. Yes. You know, if they come to at 16 without those abilities, what can you do to help them get to that point? Yeah, yeah. okay, and that links mm. in nicely to the one where people often turn around who have got somebody in the college system who are sending them on an apprenticeship, yeah. will turn around to the college, or at least in, in perhaps canteen banter, will turn mm. around and say, what do they teach you at college? Yeah. Which can be a bit of a, a, a blow to that system. Don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect system, I'm not backing it up beyond my own practice, but they've only got them maybe for 35 weeks. If they're apprentices, they're probably doing a six hour learning day. If they're a full time learner, they're for, wait for it, full time learners there for 12 and a half hours. That's a full time course, so hence they could do work experience for a couple of days a week. Who's got them for the majority of the time during their apprenticeship? Again, it's, it's the employer, isn't it? You know, they're there a lot of the time, you know, and as, as much as it is the college's responsibility, yep. it is the college's responsibility to teach them the qualification and to get yep. them through that and to give them the knowledge they need to be an electrician. Yes. That's one part of the puzzle, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, I think we said this at the start. We said, we said a couple of things when we were prepping for this. Number one, we don't want to come across as preachy. Yes. Because that's, that's not what we're we about. Don't. We're just trying to share our experience and what we've seen on our side of things. Um, and also, the, the best apprenticeships will be a partnership between the apprentice, yep. the electrician who's taking care of them, and the college, yep. you know, the college lecturer. And if, if all three of those are firing, all those cylinders are firing, it'll be a, a great thing and they'll do really well. Yeah. If any one of them is misfiring or not doing what they should be doing, and that goes as much for yes. you know, the lecturer as anyone, then that's when the problems start to set in. Yeah. Yeah. So college is knowledge, and that's 35 weeks, one day a week on an apprenticeship. So then you need to look at yourself perhaps in the mirror, perhaps look at your company, perhaps look at the people that are involved in your apprentices and say to them, they're actually a teacher for four days a week. Mm. So you're then however much effort you put into your apprentice over those four days, and we understand it can't be a one-to-one -one thing yeah. all the time. They've got to- Still got to get the job done. <laughs> still got to get the job done. But if you don't show anyone enough of the stuff you expect them to learn, mm. they won't actually learn it because nobody's born with this stuff in their head, are they? Yeah, and, and actually if you, if you teach them at work properly, if you teach them well, in theory, that should take pressure off your shoulders. That's something that I'm still trying to figure out because I tend to take stuff on myself and want to do everything. Yes. By actually sharing that load, train, it's worth investing that time to train them because actually they can then take the workload off you a little bit. Yeah, and it's probably going to be a year. So again, yeah. your feedback in the comments would be great on this. It's probably going to be a year of your effort, the college's effort, the, the apprentice's effort, whether it be male or female, in order that they start being an, a, an asset in some degree to the business. They can do enough things to make your life that little bit easier. But of course, you've got to continue putting effort into them to, to mould them into the electrician you want to be. A little giggle there. So what's Sorry. the meaning? <laughs> Sorry, just, a little giggle. So, so uh, we've not addressed the fact that, that Gordon's not here, really, have Isn't, we? I, Sorry, this is just a little uh, break because I've just seen something that's made me giggle. So Gordon's not Gordon? here. I, I know. It, it, I just, probably people are mystified because I look so much like him. Okay. Right? I've just, I've just, so we're going to, it's on the board. We're going to lean into it a little bit later on. So I'll let you into a little secret. Gordon is on holiday. He's gone to Scrappy. And it took him two days, believe it or not, to erect his temporary accommodation. But you'll be pleased to know that it is fully erected. And he is in the local clubhouse. He's just had the Bradley Bear show, hasn't he? And he said to me, straight after the Bradley Bear show, he's going to be tuning in to this while his good missus goes off and plays a little bit of bingo. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm suspicious because there is someone in the comments going by the name of Mao Ricious. Ooh. And they're not taking shots at you, but there's little comments coming in. So there's little comments coming in. They've all, they've all, let's put it this way. They've already put a time in for the Gordon time. Oh, have they? Yeah, yeah. They've already said the keyword for the show, okay. so, they were, so he's in for the winning. So Mauritius is all over the yeah. usual stuff. Mauritius. We've never seen him before. Okay, this is a new. new, but Mauritius. And the latest comment he's put on there is Gary wearing socks. He is. 
Now yes, that's orange socks. That to me, that to me is someone who knows the show a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if that might be Gordon undercover. Okay, so, so undercover being the word, because the temporary accommodation has been built. Like I said, it took two days. So uh, I'd imagine his good, uh, good wife Caroline is uh, currently into the bingo. So I think, it's all, I think, all good I stuff. Think, yeah, I think he might be on his own watching this somewhere. Yeah. Okay, let's back to the serious it's story. Okay, that's fine. I like the little giggle. So it goes back to now. So you, you still may be considering it, and now you've probably got to think, well, actually, there's a lot of onus on me. If I've got them for four days a week, actually, I'm a teacher for four, four days. I've got a college supporting it as well. I need the right person. Mm -hmm. Then you start weighing up the options, don't you? Maybe do you take somebody on at 16 or do you take on somebody older? But what is the differentiation between taking somebody younger and somebody older from the employer's initial point of view? Uh, so the, there's a couple of things to think about. One is funding. Yeah. So it's harder to get funding for an older apprentice or there's not as much available. I'm not sure exactly what the rules are. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to think about is it's probably going to cost you more up front because an older apprentice is probably not going to be able to work for the same wage as a younger apprentice. Okay. Or, or their expectations might be a little bit higher. Yeah, so it's, it's that balancing act. Yeah. You take somebody on who's yeah, considered to be older than 16, yeah. they want more money. <laughs> okay. but, but they might be able to bring a little bit more to the you party. You might be getting a more mature... You know, and again, we're, we're speaking in generalities tonight. I mean, we've, we've had 16-year-old learners in our classrooms who you'd sort of, you think, well, I'd, I'd hire him now. Yes. You know, I'd work with that lad from day one, you know. Um, you know and, and we've had the converse as well. We've had the opposite as well. But in gen generally speaking, that, that older learner has probably got a bit more maturity, has experienced work, yeah. maybe figured out what they want to do with life. So probably a little bit more committed, really. And I would say that the rule is for me, if they were a female apprentice of 16, they were all great. I never, we never had no. an issue with any of those. So if you're thinking of diving in and getting somebody at 16, perhaps just go for a female electrician because all your problems go away. I think that's a, a lot of things are a little bit more mature, but they actually got a lot more to prove and they're going to make sure they prove their way in. So that becomes salary. And you mentioned funding now. The reason we're not going to spend too much time talking about funding, and I'm sure if you're interested in taking on an apprentice, you really want to know what the funding is. It can be quite liquid, can't it? It can be move around. It does depend yeah. on age sometimes. But if we end up slipping into a recession, yeah. they tend to, don't they? Well, we've, we've, we've said all along, you know, education tends to thrive during a recession, it doesn't does. it? And actually, that's when I went into teaching, 2008, the massive crash. That was when I started teaching because, you know, <laughs> the economy wasn't great. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure you'd describe education as thriving when I entered it. But, you know, okay. it was... Uh, there certainly does seem to be an uptick in education. You know, the government tends to put a bit of money into it. Yeah, so by putting more yeah. money into it, you might find that you've got somebody you're trying to take on older, and obviously there's a little bit of funding becomes different. By all means, check it out. It's easy to find if you do a Google search to get a sort of understanding. Go to your local college. So, so you're in that sort of position. So you might be considering having one who's been burnt before. So if you've been burnt before, we, we recommend in both cases that you do an extended work experience so you can get used to each other. It might be a case that you don't or they don't like each other. So you've got that one. And then you've got to be thinking about maybe an older person over a younger person and, and the queries that we have between the two. Yeah, yeah, so. Interesting, yeah. So, so, yeah. so what are the comments? you want to have a quick dive into the comments? Uh, yeah, so we've got uh, Aaron, who I, I love, he just goes by the name Aaron. Yeah, uh, so probably because it's his name. Doesn't need a surname, you know, he's so famous. Adele. Uh, it, it, I'm only a few miles from Scrapby. I'll keep a lookout. So, oh, right, okay. So we've got someone on Gordon yeah. watch there, so that's handy. Thank you. Uh, Mauritius has gone suspiciously quiet, so uh, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think we've rumbled him. <laughs> Um, some good debate about uh, older versus younger apprentices. Yeah, go on in. Give us that I think one. Uh, there's, there's Adrian up north. Would people change their mind if it was an older apprentice? Why not have 30 plus apprentices? Absolutely. That's probably yeah, but, a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no ceiling to it. So I've seen people, yeah. you know, 40s um, and 50s on apprenticeships. Yeah, we've got Ollie then responding to that saying, Do you think the 30 plus will have a better attitude to being there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, fair, again, fair statement. Yeah. But again, in our experience, we could have somebody age 16 with a perfect attitude, and, and I've had older people on a full time group. We've got yeah. the door open so you can hear the traffic outside. Um, older people in their 30s that are coming back trying to retrain, and they were. They were, yeah, they didn't want to learn a lot. I nearly used other words, but they didn't want to learn a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is a mixed bag. It's so, all about the person. I think, I, think we, I, think we, I think Adrian up north and uh, Carl Robson are actually on the same page, I think, about, uh, okay. about apprenticeships, but, older but apprenticeships. So payback. Just, yeah, go on. Mauritius has come back now. Oh, so he's he? back in the game. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Asking, where is Scrappy? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's Gordon. I think we've found you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrappy Gordon, temporary yeah. accommodation. Does Caroline, does Caroline know you're watching? Yeah, yeah. She's at the bingo. <laughs> 
And it's a payoff. It's about a year, isn't it? So you've got to put a year's worth of effort into yeah. someone for them actually to start yeah. coming back out the other side where they're going to be reasonable. I think that's the other thing to remember is that actually if you do take an apprentice on, you're actually doing a, a, quite a noble thing, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a big commitment to take on and, that, and it's a big responsibility as well, you know. And you see, you see on social media a lot, you know, people saying they've had to lose their apprentice for, for whatever reason. You know, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but, you know, what, a, what an incredible experience if you can take someone on, if you can commit to them and give them kind of the support they need for them to then turn out to be a brilliant electrician. You yep. know, and hopefully, if you've got that brilliant working relationship, that, that kind of work relationship will continue. You know, they won't be on the first bus out of there as soon as they're qualified. So... Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah it's, it's a tough one. And it's that, I've been burnt before, but I think I think putting a structure in before, the 31% of people said they've been burnt before, I think if you do that, you come and work for me for a year maybe while you continue on at college. Yeah. And then after that year, we'll make another decision. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. The, the person you're taking on, whether it be male or female, has got a year's worth of quality work experience, and you've had somebody come along, and you've had a, a year's try before you buy it, and you say it didn't work out. I don't think there's no losers in that. And we, we've said before, haven't we, if someone hadn't taken a chance on it as, yes. as apprentices. And I, How and old I, were you when you got yours? I, I was 16, and I was by no means a sure thing. I, I was not a brilliant apprenticeship when I, uh, apprentice when I started. I was a bit unsure about what I was doing. So, uh, But you know, fortunately, the, the chap I was working with was brilliant. He was an excellent teacher, excellent electrician, very patient, and he... he yeah, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be, you, would, you wouldn't be there watching me now. So there we go. And again, from our experience, we're not going to spend too much time on it, but our experience is a room full of first-year apprentices had very few 16-year-old learners in it. Mm, it's um, true, actually. Yeah, and, you think and, about those last and, years. And when you look at them and you go around, you say, you must be working for your dad or your mum. Yes, and that was the case. And then it was a cousin, uncle or brother. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that try before you buy for both parties. Yeah, is, a, re is a real, real winner. Yeah. So again, keep, keep those comments coming in. We're going to talk more about our experiences and maybe some of the funnier stories about being an apprentice when we slip into what is the plug and socket. You'll know when that comes up because obviously we'll come a lot more relaxed. I'll probably go over there and get a tissue. I'm full of hay fever at the <laughs> yeah, moment. I'll, so. I'll break my orange juice. <laughs> so. <laughs> so keep those comments coming in. We're going to do the register in a few moments, so make sure you're in and you've been leaving comments if you want to get a shout out, and it's going to be by Joe, so we go over there. And we'll also pick up at the same time Gary's Swap Shop keyword if you haven't already used it and got it into the comments. Now, we must say something about the post at this stage, haven't we, um, Gordon? I need to say Gordon. And we, Gordon? <laughs> or Mauritius. Uh, Mauritius. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, why am I suddenly apologising for it? But you've been apologising. And apparently it's my fault. <laughs> so, apologise for the post. So, yes, for the post. Um, yeah, we've, we've had... Uh, Joe's been on holiday. Uh, Joe 2.0, who uh, is uh, one of... Yeah, he's a top lad, but he's been away. And it was very difficult for him to send the post out from Turkey. So he's, uh, he's back now. He's getting caught up with his workload and he's going to be sending stuff out. Uh, and he's upstairs now listening, so he, he just knows that's been added to his to-do list. So <laughs> there's, there's no way out of it now. Um, so yeah, the, the, it will come. But what's our what's our shipping rule, Gary? Well, it takes 28 days from the point of which we start the process. Yep. So of course that gives us another little bit of lead time. So we haven't started the process yet, and when we do start it, 28 days start. That, that start point can be quite arbitrary. <laughs> so please play along. We will try our hardest to get them out. But we haven't had many uh, Gary swap shops coming in recently, so uh, it'll be interesting True. to see, won't it? Yeah, and there's there's some new opportunities to win in the week as well, which. We're going to talk about in a minute. We are. Quite okay, so I think we're going to go over and do the register now. So I'm going to bring in the mic so we can bring in the guys in the other area. So let's just give me a second to put the mics on. Yep. I think they've come up. Let's go over to the inspirational corner, which is... Hello, gents. That's a Good great evening. Shot. Can you hear me? Well, well I can. I'm in the same well, room yeah, as you. Yeah, 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 you're just you're there. Crystal clear, Rick. Absolutely <laughs> exactly crystal, crystal clear. Answer. As I'm not watching it at home, I can't tell. Yeah. Right, so we're going to go through the register today then. Eh? Today we're going to try a bit of wizardry. Now then, do you want to run through it, Joe? Yeah, sure thing. So today, the wizardry is on about. We've got a new system, so Rick's been working hard. A bit of dabbling some, in yeah, his spare time. On the, some new codes that pulls everyone's names in, so we don't have to go through them all in the YouTube comments. So starting off, we've got <laughs> first on the list is Richard Gaunt. So <laughs> welcome, Rick. Try it out then somewhere, aren't we? We've got Carl Robson, Billy Toy, Terry Moore, Sean Spark, Socket, Azuri Electrical. Wall Bouncer, Brian Hewitt, Chris B, DAE, Aaron, uh, Shifung Nam, Giffords Electrical, James Kane, Nick Bundy, Rap Tool Guy, Ollie, Sean Dempsey, Andrew Brown, TMIET, Nick Bundy again, we're getting duplicates now. <laughs> we had a uh, technical uh, issue. <coughs> we'll improve with time. Uh, Dan Sparky in training. Jonathan Rose, Mauritius, hello, Barbara. 
Gadget Man, Davey, Adrian up north. Uh, if we get into duplicates again. Rick, do you, do you know any ones that uh, have got here. Cal Robinson, Alan Chan, Aaron, we've already said, KS, Lee Winsper, PDKH, JB Electrical, uh, Rusco Customs, Steve, Paul Tipton, X Forces Electrician, James Kane, and Joe Robinson. <laughs> By the looks of it, we've got a couple of new ones as well. These are, oh, Mauritius is showing up on there as well. Steve Ady, Thomas Yu, Holly Wardsworth, Steve Ayres, Robin Thacker, uh, Essex County Electrical, and Martin Russell. That's the register, oh. and with regards to the post, I will get it sorted tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for making you wait, but yeah. On okay. Holiday. So thank you, gents. yeah, we're trying out some new software there, so that's really good, and hopefully it worked really well for you, Rick. So if we want to pass them over to our resident apprentice, uh, we're definitely doing a try before we buy on this one. And you've got some information for us about a keyword, haven't you? Gary Swap Shop keyword is apprenticeship. Okay, thank you very much. So the keyword, if you want to play along with Gary Swap Shop, is apprenticeship. We're just going to turn their mics off. I'm desperate to cough as well, so that's going to be a real struggle yeah, at some yeah, point. Uh, I'm not, yeah, having to hold we, things in. Yeah. Well, you've got to go up there. So <laughs> as soon as you go up and do your thing, I'll be coughing and spluttering everywhere. <laughs> so Gary Swap Shop, how do you play along with that? Okay, so you have to put the keyword in, which my son said was apprenticeship, not apprenticeships, which we had in the practice. He's going to do a good job. He did do a good job. Yeah, yeah. He's done nothing all day. So if his mother's watching, <laughs> yeah, he's held the seat <laughs> down up in the lofted area while watching he, YouTube. He has made endless cups of tea, and therefore he's my favourite. And he's tidied up a little bit as well. He's done a bit of camera work as well. So he had a, he had a heroic day yesterday when we were at Doncaster Cables. If you remember in the plug and socket, I'll tell you how busy that day was. <laughs> that was a long day. That was. Yeah. So okay, to play along, then you're going to be put that in. When we pull your name out, and two people, we've got a piece of software now that will pull them out randomly. And, and, Rick's done. And, and, a, and a completely homemade piece of software that yeah that Rick's just, Rick's just produced that we're saying it's like we've, we've hired Mark Zuckerberg and Iron Man in one isn't it it's just fantastic and when, when it's pulled out obviously you've got to send me something down to Lineside Studios the uh, address is in the description below so we're looking at sending it to BD23 1TB okay that's the one uh, Lineside Studios okay is our address so make sure you get it off to us so if you're picked out I want you to write down three formulas that you remembered from when you were an apprentice or if you are an apprentice I want three formulas in the noise letter and in the noise letter you must say also that I'm your favorite okay which nobody has yet done okay three for us three formulas <laughs> yeah if you send me three formulas I'm going to send you out some stuff that's got to be the easiest Gary Swap Shop win ever, hasn't it? I mean, that's... Well, they don't have to send you an actual product. No, I mean, just send three yeah. formulas from your apprenticeship that you remember. So we've got the thermos flask from our good friend Trevor at EV Blocks, and he's already been on and sent you a private message and mugged me off in it, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> on, on Instagram. He mugged yeah. me off, yeah. It doesn't go in notice, Trevor. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor, if you're on. Much appreciated. We've got our Eddie Current uh, hat, which is really good. I've got a selection of stickers in here. Okay, so you've got so all the stickers, I think, from the collection that we've done. And... Hopefully, if you're already an electrician, you might want to give it to an apprentice or somebody who's in the training process. I'll give you one of the safe isolation kits. And we've still got, I know there's a big thing on uh, safe isolation at the minute going around on social media. Mm. I don't know how many we've given away. Let's say conservatively, we've given away 2,000. Mm. I think we've got another 3,500 of these to give away when we start our college connections um, in September. And we're off to college of the year first. We'll be going over to Lincoln before we uh, spread our wings across the rest of the uh, UK and yeah. going into 2023, as we said before, we're going to Scotland and we're going to Devon. Hold the show. Okay, we hold the show. We just had oh, no. what a we had? super thanks. Can I guess a super chat on this Super one? chat. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to guess. Guess away. Uh, Richard Brooks. <laughs> Richard Brooks. It just so happens. <laughs> we, we couldn't see him in shot. Oh, we apologise, Richard. We're leaving them here so you can see them so you don't have to give us a super, just, super chat. Oh, hang on. One below. of the packers for the table, you know. Just just it off. When yeah. your table's a bit unwobbly. Remember your GCSEs? You always have lift, yeah, lift it up a bit. Top so we've got these. For GCSEs. <laughs> yeah, top tip. Yeah. So what we've got here is the old uh, sockets, yep. safety shield. So you can uh, redecorate, uh, plaster around, etc. Leave the client with their. Uh, uh, electrical supply still on. There's a reusable one and there is a disposable one. So there's sockets, safety shield, and we've got the splates. Yep, I actually use these on my house, on my kitchen refurb. 
Did you? So, yeah, I actually use these, yeah, and they're very good. Very and good. that's where you push the plasterboard, did you cut out and all the rest of it? Or yeah, did yeah, you, yeah, yeah, did the whole thing, yeah, yeah. used Fantastic. it as, as instructed, and yeah, it's a, that's a good bit of kit. And I apologise there, Richard, we, we've left them in shot, but you just couldn't quite see them, could yeah. you? So well done for well done for the super thanks, or chat, yeah. super chat, super, super chat. chat, so yeah, you've got a super chat, we just moved yeah. them back into shot, so yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'll try and remember next time leaving on the table. <laughs> Okay, that's brilliant. So we're off and running with our game set. Have we got any people coming in with the apprenticeship? Oh, loads. I mean, okay, this, thank is, this, you is, very much. this is where the, the support team upstairs, old uh, Waldorf, Statler and Beaker. <laughs> no, the one with the drums. What was yeah. the drums one? Oh, Animal. Animal, yeah. yeah animal. Uh, so so uh, they'll animal. take care of the actual processing of this, but... Yeah, Mauritius is in there. Oh, is he? Yeah. But yeah, oh, there's, there's just so many. Chris B, Sean the Spark, Thank Amateur you. Jack, Terry Moore, that tall guy. It's just, it's so nice to see so many names on, uh, especially on such a... Such a hot night as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah, we thank everyone who's joined us in. And again, it, we'll, once we get to plug and socket, we'll try and get back to those comments or you'll refresh your comments and come back in of your experiences about taking on apprentices or maybe even your own apprenticeship. That's always <laughs> always good for a few. But if we can keep them clean in the chat, and we've been brilliant ever since we've done these about keeping comments clean in the chat. I think we've only ever had to remove one comment, apart from last week when we had a bot in there, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was on bot watch last week and it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, we did a word. thorough investigation as Team Efix into those YouTube channels and those uh, those links, making sure <laughs> what, they were awful. Were they? Just, I didn't even. It was just immediately blocked. It was okay. just, I just kept going back. It's awful. Right. So it's just as a couple of humble sparks sitting here. We think our opinion doesn't count for anything, but there is one person's opinion that counts. When he changes, he transforms himself into the mighty Joseph Robinson. I'm going to give you a little bit, I'll talk, give you a little bit of a head start, I, yeah, okay? <laughs> so you're going to need a little bit of a head start. Just so take mic off. this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be a brave moment, okay? We're going to try and do a live regulation corner. So we're going to bring him in. I've got it all down here, ready to go. So I'm bringing his music and then we're going to cut to a camera up there where we've uh, set up the regulation corner. He's, he's smashing around. You can hear the coat hangers going up as we speak. Yes, okay, overdoing it now. So I'm just going to give him a time because his intro music isn't long enough in order to get him there. I think it's the theme, it's linked to apprenticeships, isn't it, Joe? Absolutely. Okay, so he's going to come up with something linked to apprenticeships. I'll be able to listen live from the studios because at the moment I can't hear the actual live output from the TV that we're looking at. We'll show you around the set as well when we're finished in the plug and socket. You can see what we have to look at when we're doing this show. So I'm going to go where well, that's enough time for a gentleman to get a pair of trousers and a shirt on as we go over to Joe Robinson live for Regulation Corner. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to Regulation Corner today on location in my future study. Take a seat, get comfortable, maybe pour yourself a drink of lovely Taplin Springs water. So this week on the live stream, we've been discussing the subject of apprentices, their roles, responsibilities, their passions, and their dreams. Well, maybe not the last two. But it's got me thinking about a regulation that as time goes on seems to me to be possibly the most important of all those passages of passionate prose the authors of BS7671 produce. It's one we've featured before here on Regulation Corner and in multiple videos but it's one of those marvellous pieces of writing that seems to reveal a new message to the industry every time you reread it. It's 134.1.1. And bear in mind that this is contained in the section of the regs covering fundamental principles, those critically important underpinning foundations of all that is to follow in the Big Brown Book and on into the wider industry that we've sworn to uphold. It reads, Good workmanship by one or more skilled or instructed persons and proper materials shall be used in the erection of the electrical installation. The installation of electrical equipment shall take account of manufacturer's instructions. As always with the regs, the technical, precise, seemingly cold and distant language betrays a deeper truth. How so? Well, it mentions that installation work shall be carried out using good workmanship, perhaps work personship would be more appropriate here, by skilled or instructed persons. So, is an apprentice either of those, or perhaps neither of those? Well, let's allow the regs to do the talking. By looking at the definition section, there, for a skilled person, we read, person who possesses, as appropriate to the nature of the electrical work to be undertaken, adequate education, training, and practical skills. And, 
who is able to perceive risks and avoid hazards which electricity can create. Notice the towering trifecta of education, training and skills there. That's what makes an electrician that perfectly balanced and harmonious set of qualities. That's what we strive for in the trade. And when we scale that summit, it's a rewarding moment. But what about the other type of person mentioned in Regulation 134.1.1, the instructed person? Well, that's defined as a person adequately advised or supervised by a skilled person, as defined, to enable that person to perceive risks and to avoid hazards which electricity can create. So do you see the wonderful harmony and structure hinted at here that exists between these two parties, where the skilled person is guiding, supporting, and indeed defending the instructed person in their charge from the hazards and harmful situations that could all too quickly tear apart their tentative, burgeoning and fragile working relationship. It really is a privilege and a responsibility to mentor and protect the next generation. And in reciprocation, shouldn't the apprentices be looking to their skilled person as that guide, hanging on their every word, waiting for the next pearl of wisdom to drop from their vast treasury of knowledge and experience? Or maybe it's just a passage of text in the technical standard. Who knows? Either way, I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for stopping by and the next time you're passing, drop in. Say hello. You know there's always a place for you here at Regulation Corner. Good night. Yep, as always, absolutely fantastic. It was odd, because I had that sensation of listening to him while you were upstairs. You didn't get time to get changed? No, I didn't give him no time to get changed on the way back. I, I managed it on the way up. Okay. Yep. Well, you're never the way back down was a bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so you look very smart for this evening. And, uh, this I, feel, is... I feel overdressed, I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah, okay. I feel overdressed. So we're just going to bring this one in here. We're going to test out your skills, because unlike the segment that we would have done, but Mauritius has jumped in there, you're not Gordon, are you? No, no, so we decided we were gonna we we're gonna stick to the traditional roles. So you're gonna be Gary tonight. I'm yeah. gonna be I'm gonna be Gordon effectively. Yes. So so I'm gonna get distracted by the uh, <laughs> yeah, by, the, by yeah. the laptop and, and then, you're gonna passively aggressively needle me all night. <laughs> That's what we decided we'd do. We'd do. <laughs> so, so right, let, on so, with that. Okay, so we'd like to thank the people that make this uh, absolutely possible every two weeks. We'd like to thank um, oh we've got Rick's floating around. I think he's got some winners for us for later on. We're gonna be seeing winners he's, early. I he's think trying so. to distract me, I've got to focus here. So we've got the great people from uh, let's go for uh, Vargo, they're in there, the Luden and Palazzoli people who sponsor that Electricians Challenge which is coming up later on. We've got Marshall Tufflex. We've also got the great people that I've seen this week down at Doncaster Cables. I spent an entire day with hashtag above Aaron, or as I would like to say, the Aaron scale, which we, again, may bring up in the uh, plug and socket. And what is the Aaron scale? The people at BG Laseco also need a great shout out, and we've been working with one of their products that we were unbelievably impressed with. And that video is hopefully going to be out on Saturday, and that one is definitely worth checking out. And of course, last time we were here, we had Marshall Tufflex come in, didn't we? And there's a video for them coming out all about Marshall Tufflex and maybe some things you didn't know about them. And that leaves us one nice, easy one I've left you with. Who's left? It's our brand new sponsor for the live stream. I was watching that like a hawk. Uh, my Energy. So uh, what a, a big thank you to My Energy. We've, we've sort of, since day one really, they've been helping us, we've been helping them. Uh, yeah. We've had a great relationship with them. So thank you all to all of our sponsors uh, for, for helping us out. The show wouldn't happen without you. No, so it's good. Appreciate it. Yeah, so it's good. And the people at My Energy, and again, that might be a story for the plug and socket because we spent a, a lot of time with Dr. Chris Horn, didn't we? We were touring the UK doing the things called events back in about 2019-20 when we went to events obviously there was a gap in the market then uh, for about two years there was a complete gap in the market where nobody did events uh, and we have some great stories about Dr. Chris Horn and his name and where he works for. And maybe we'll bring that one also up in the public. It's an absolute gem of a beauty, isn't it? It was. Okay, so thank you to my energy. Uh, Jordan's also and Dr. Chris have been very, yeah. uh, very generous when it comes to helping my daughter out with her prosthetic hand. And for those people who've been following me across social media, not necessarily in the eFix world, because we tended to leave it out of there, perhaps in that other world that I uh, accumulate on uh, YouTube. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's helped out there as well. And she picks her bionic arm up on Monday. So I'm having a day off to drive to Bristol and hopefully the process of learning to use a um, 
Prosthetic limb can start from there onwards. She's got the entire summer holidays, hopefully, to start that mastering process. So thank you to my energy also for helping us on there. Oh, we've got a got a screen change there. Ooh. What's happened there? Oh, it's, I think it's the telly. Oh, it's the telly's done yeah, something. So, so we, we need, to, all we right need to tell it not to shut down. Okay. Really well, I'll let you do that um, while I fiddle around here. Okay. We you've not got the remote. remote? No. Okay. So we'll be back. Okay. We won't worry about that. Okay. Okay, so regulation corny, you're wearing a suit and we were leaning into this moment. Uh, Mauritius, okay. Mauritius, Mauritius. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. still on there, yeah. He's yeah. still on there. Okay, at this all... point we were going to do the big reveal that this isn't Gordon, okay. Uh, it's certainly, you got mistaken, didn't you, at a trade show for Gordon's son, didn't you? <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. Well, I have. It wasn't. It wasn't quite that straightforward. So, so was... hang on a second. Did they think you? They, did they think you were Gordon's son? <laughs> no, no. We maybe lent into that a little bit heavily. So, so what happened was we all got badges. Yeah, and when I got there, um, I I didn't know I had to register, so I had no badge. So I got like it was some kind of like generic. Oh, you don't have a badge. Here's a here's a, a stupid badge because you didn't register. So okay. you know, sort of like wearing a dunce's cap. And then uh, the other Joe Joe Routledge had two badges okay. for some reason and, and I ended up wearing his I think for he was doing something I ended up just popping his around my neck to keep it safe so then of course it said Joe Routledge across my chest okay. and one of the chaps at which stand was it, it was the EV charger stand oh I yes remember what no. their name was well, mate, you're asking me oh, no remember. okay um, but um, they they were looking at the badges and going oh there's a lot of Routledges here isn't there and uh, you know and then we realized what <laughs> <laughs> we were getting confused and uh, yeah, lent rather heavily into that you were his Gordon son. being my dad. So, okay, so this is, we'd normally have a special guest on. We've been doing double guests uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks. We've had a little break from it and we're also having a break from live streams. And we're going to uh, start back up again after this when we're starting back up on the 10th of August. Yeah. Just gives us that mini break for yourselves and us just to reset. We've got some holidays. We've got people on holiday at the minute. Yeah. We've got the Scrappy Kid um, over there at the Bingo at Mauritius. the moment. Yeah, yeah. Mauritius. I think, I, think it, I think it's actually only one show that we're missing, actually, yeah, but it, it, when it, you count it. it yeah. That makes it a four-week gap, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it gives us a little bit of a break on there. So... This is the last one, so we haven't got any special guests in for this one. Well, we haven't got a special guest because we've got, obviously, Joe joined us this time and uh, obviously not Gordon. And uh, just on a personal note, Gordon, you're getting lots of comments saying they're really happy for Vienna and really good news. So you, okay. you, you don't see the comments. So no, I don't. See that, so I don't so so let you know. Lots of people saying... Again, it's humbling, news. obviously, on... Yeah, you know, we try not mix that one with the eFix brand. Obviously, that was done elsewhere on social media, which was great. And people came across there and helped me as well, so that was lovely. So what have you been up to? Have you been busy with... With the CPDs, I have yes, desperately trying to get those uh, those into order because we've got a lot coming out. We've got a lot on the way. They take a bit of crafting. Uh, there's quite a lot that goes into those, and so uh, that's been that's been yeah my major duty at the moment is trying to get those out the door. Uh, and there's lots of CPDs coming up, so you know there's all sorts of topics: EV charge points, uh, AFDDs. Uh, the lighting, the ventilation, building regulation changes. There's, yeah. there's a huge amount of change going on at the minute outside. Well, not outside, but in areas that are, you know, sort of not BS 7671. Basically, we had that big change earlier in the year that we hopefully got you caught to speed on quite well. Uh, and now there's loads and loads of stuff happening in building regulations, which is going to impact on the electrical trade quite heavily actually okay so so again for those people who want to keep up with that that's on the know-how tab at efix.co.uk yeah. look for the know-how tab and within there there's free training okay so all you need to do is watch your video with you in answer a few multi-choice questions and if you're not successful you can have another go and another go and another go if you are successful your certificate is emailed to you so we don't have to get joe to post it out to you do we <laughs> which is good yeah so so over the next few weeks there'll there'll be quite a few of those dropping so keep checking back on the know-how page keep checking social media because we, we'll be pushing those out and, and again, even if it's something you you don't think it relates to you, if we're making it, it does. You know, so That's do good, that is do good check point. in on it. You know. And you shouldn't have favourites, okay? But the last one you did on AFDD or circuit protection, oh, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not I mean, it is, yeah. it is it's mint. It's absolutely mint. I don't know, I've watched them all, but that one, I just I don't know why. I just watched it and thought you're properly on it. Got a little little tweak to make to that one, and then that'll be. I'm, I'm hoping either the end of this week or early next week that'll be dropping. So oh, yeah, keep, just, keep just tuned for just, that. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I'd actually like it to go public planned. on YouTube. I'd love that video just to go. We're public. debating that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I just I just think it's such a brilliant. I know it's it's 20 minutes and all the rest of it, but I don't see why you jump out of that video. Yeah. You just stay on. It's great. So so that's what you've been and you've been up here doing a CPD this week, and we've got some other bits yep. and bats to do. If Mauritius is on, we're we're currently not working our way <laughs> oh, through the yeah. list. <laughs> we're on with it, Gordon. <laughs> we're on with we're, it. We're not completing the videos we need to in time. Yeah, but, and, um, uh, but but the other thing, the other thing that I'm working hard on at the moment, and which actually I'm loving doing, uh, is our 
can we can we use the the word electrical news weekly yeah the podcast that we're yeah. working on yeah, yeah the we'll podcast do... that we do so uh, we do electrical news weekly now it drops every monday uh, and that is it's it's on youtube so hopefully some of you have spotted it there but it is also available on major podcasting platforms and what what we'd really love is for you to to watch one and listen to the other so, so it'd be really good if you could could enjoy both you know one way you're watching there's extra visuals coming in but also the one on the audio platforms there's some little tweaks in there just to make it a little there bit is. different for audio and it is yeah and uh, yeah and I, I mean i i don't like listening to myself back but it's I agree. It's, it's well put <laughs> you don't like listening to me back <laughs> i agree <laughs> um but it's yeah I, it's it's pretty good content yeah, so that's something new. So, so how many would episodes are we into now? Six? We no, about we're on six? like uh, 12, I think. We're, are we? Yeah. 12? Sure we've we done are, 12 yeah. weeks. Wow, so again, that's news to me. Okay, yeah, but sure again, it might be the sort of thing you may see. It drops on Mondays. Yep. Okay, it varies on the time on a Monday. We're trying different times and different platforms. And then obviously it goes out onto your local uh, podcasting ones. Yeah. So the one on Monday will be the 12th. Wow, yeah. that and is unbelievable. Done it, done it, I think we've missed one week when I was on holiday. So okay. yeah, it's been. Yeah. And again, it gives you a chance to keep up with all those latest news. There's some decent story headlines in there as well. And some so, bits some and interesting bits. stuff that's, yeah, sort of. Yeah, we, there's, there's news about products and news about bits and bobs, but there's also news about people in the industry and there's news about, you know, sort of the, the wider energy industry as a whole so and of course you can win prizes on there don't mean yeah. you're going to get them posted out to you okay as you've been finding out fishbait 075 <laughs> if you're on <laughs> i'm all over joe i'm trying to get him to send your prize out so we'll keep trying so just for listening there's a chance also to win a prize on there yeah. so yeah so it's good so it's nice that we got you up but obviously we're pushing those cpds that's why you don't see a lot of joe because effectively i've seen it this week it's very labor intensive isn't it in order to do those so you sometimes best being you know hidden away for a while yeah in order to create those CPDs. But make sure you check them out on the eFix Know How tab as well as all great podcasting platforms for the Electrical News Weekly. Okay, so happy with that? You've had your segment now. So that's that's me done. Yeah, yeah, so we can get you... back to the Gary show. Well, yes, now it's, uh, <laughs> let's have a segment on me. I've never had a segment about me, have we? We should do. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Thank you very much uh, uh, for continuing the support of everything that we do here at eFix. So we thank you for that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to need the, the GT songs. Can you do your Gordon impression for me, please? He's well, not uh, on, remember? Well, if, if Gordon, please forgive me. If, <laughs> if, uh, right. Yeah, it's time for the Gordon time. Go on, isn't it? <laughs> so this is the uh, so uh, we've got uh, Chris Theobald taking part in I can't do it now I'm trying to I've lost it oh okay I've lost it. do, do so, it in your normal voice do it in my normal voice uh, so we've got Chris Theobald coming up on the uh, electrician's challenge wall okay uh, the chance to win a prize here what is the prize the prize is the box of Vargo it is the box of Vargo right. connectors <laughs> it's a great prize yeah actually. it is a great it's prize, a really prize. Uh, so that's available if you guess or you get the closest to the winning time uh, that it took Chris to do the challenge wall uh, so uh, it's, this is always an exciting bit of the show, uh, and he did a very, very good job. Okay. And Gary's just off trying to get Carl's hold of time. Carl's time. So do you think he's is he this faster side? The nine fifty four, or do you think he belongs on the actual wall uh, where the uh, the quick people? Go? Yeah. So make sure you get your times in now. This is your chance to put it in. Remember, you can only have one guess, and it'll be your first guess. Remember, we've got a special piece of software now, no doubt, that's going to be thumbing through those and working out whether you've uh, fraudulently gained the information yeah. by video where we've left the cover off the yeah. uh, and display board. Is it one guess only? As yeah, well? one, one yeah, guess yeah. only, yeah, is what you do. It's just what people tend to do is, once it's started, can tell from a whiff at the start. If they go off like a rocket, they think, <laughs> I need to shave a minute and a half off it. If they amble into their screwdrivers, they're thinking yeah. their way out. The closest time will win these uh, Vargo connectors, and that's a prize you just win straight away. We don't post it straight away, but obviously you win that one straight away, unlike Gary Swap Shop. So that's really good. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one, though. Are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, Chris, he, I'd, I'd love to have been up here when he came because he's been, yeah, he's been following, following us, us on LinkedIn yeah, for a long yeah. time, hasn't he? Yeah, 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 really insightful comments as well. He's yeah, a yeah, chat, really yeah. nice bloke. So, yeah. so he travelled some distance. So this will be the furthest anyone's ever come in order to do the electrician challenge. Can you just confirm that there is a load of times flooding in, and I can start her off. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, yeah, there's there's quite a few in there. Yes, there's yes, there's a lot. There's yeah. enough to yeah. start. I, I think so. I think we get a chance to have a rest. Are you going to stand them close? Jamie Electrical Ox is off. I gotta go watch the rest later. No, he's going. There's a there's a beautiful moment in there. We have got. Oh, just stay just stay on it, for the. Yeah, because you said. Did, yeah. Does he pop up? Does he? So we've got the we've got the Raymo when you stand on the step. We've got the half Raymo when you put one foot on the step, and of course we leave it around. We've got the Maloney where you bite the cables, and uh, I think I think we fully leaned into now the uh, the new one when you check out. The, excuse oh, me, I'm gonna cough. It. So I'm glad he's gone because he said if that's, if that's Gordon, he's let himself go. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's get in. Let's see how we got on in this week's Electrician's Challenge. Thank you very much for Luden Palazzoli for continued support of the challenge. It's time for another Electrician's Challenge. Now, word has got out around the world about this challenge and it's bringing in people from all over the place. And no, we don't mean Lancashire. No, we don't mean Lincolnshire, as I've been reliably formed, is not in Yorkshire anymore. It is my pleasure to introduce Chris Theobald, who's travelled all the way from India. <laughs> so, Chris, this is a first. That's right. Yeah. Now, you've just come across to England just to take on the Electrician's Challenge. You could say so. You could say so. Well, not really, is it? Yeah, from you, our 2391. And 2391. That's right. Okay, so you've travelled from India that's to right. take, obviously, a British that's correct. testing and inspection course. Yes. Yeah. That, that's because we don't, we don't necessarily have a course that, is, that assesses you to that level of competence, especially with testing. We don't, we don't use MFTs. We don't test IRs. RCD test times, anything like that. So okay. upskill myself. Upskill yourself. Yes. So and the elect... I mean... Off camera, we've been talking about the electrical industry in India, mm -hmm. and there's obviously you're lucky because you live in a city that actually has power all of the time. That's right. A lot of pe most people don't have 24 by 7 elect uh, supply to electricity. Okay. Yeah. So some people don't have electricity at all, but then if you do have electricity, it might not be up there 24 by 7. And then some people have electricity, like me, but they don't necessarily have the best electric equipment and s protective devices and. Okay. Best workmanship. Yeah. I mean, we, we obviously see from time to time on YouTube and things like that, you know, electrical work in India. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you know and, and actually the same could be said for UK electrical work. If you looked on Instagram, you'd think of all course. of our wiring is awful uh, because lots of people put it out there. What is it actually like on the ground when it comes to wiring in India? It's really bad because people don't actually know what they're doing. They're just... They're just getting into it because it pays, and so they might not even know how to like wire a socket or something. They're just, they just watch someone else do it and then do it because you don't. People don't actually check if you're competent before they hire you to do their homes or offices or whatever. So yeah. there's a lot of unskilled labor. Doing okay. Electrics. Yeah. Shocking parallels we're hearing here, actually, between <laughs> what you see in India and here. And obviously, we, we may have moved on a bit. We in, in terms of. Uh, uh, you know, testing and, and things like that. But so you're now trying to bring the British influence across to India. Yes, I mean, I work by the British regs. Obviously, I don't use BSEN devices. I use IC devices, but the principles are the same, right? So if, if, the, if the British regs, if BS7671 says a certain ZE value, that would obviously be applicable because the derivation is just, it's just the same. It's calculated on the current and breaking, and yeah, the capacity, the amount of current that it needs to trigger the circuit protector device. Right? Okay. Yes. So lots of opportunities for electricians in India? I wouldn't say so as yet. As yet, you're I'm trying to create those That's opportunities. Right. So earnings wise, how much would we be earning in India as an electrician? Uh, the standard pay, I think if you get paid well, it's about eight pounds a day. Okay, well, hold on. Whoa, I was thinking an hour there, so that's not that yeah, bad. No, that's eight pounds a day. Eight pounds a day. Right, and how long is a day normally? A day is maybe eight hours. Oh, well, that's not too bad. A pound an hour. Okay, but there's lots of electricians in India. Well, supposed electric electricians. Yeah, and we'll see. But you're specialising in testing? Testing, and then I plan to do design. Okay, yes. well, let's see how we got on with the electrician's challenge. So we're going to allow you to see the fastest of the three runs from Chris. And yes, it is a race, Chris, and it is your fastest time. So sit back. Take some time, relax. Yeah, well, that's, this is what uh, happens if you're on eight pounds a day. Let's just sink that in again. You know, it sort of calibrates what you expect, so there's no need to rush. And uh, yeah, twisting, important in India. You've seen all those videos where people are twisting wires together. Yeah, but that's when they've stripped the outer PVC and they're using it to connect them together. But it goes back to your eight pound a day. How much are you going to spend on kit when the labour's eight pound a day? Yeah, I mean, just put that into the contrast of something like a, a Vargo connector. Yeah, that's that's almost like a, a good chunk of your daily salary's gone in connectors. You wouldn't, uh, so people tend to not do it. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we've got up the conduit there. Seems pretty seamless. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is flat out for Krish. 
So obviously that 2391 course didn't require that much speed. It's just precision and we've continued that on. So single insulated cables, I've seen some photographs from Chris where the single insulated cables back in his home country are just draped everywhere. Okay, so no enclosure. So maybe the enclosure's uh, quite new to him. So we're gonna untwist now, are we Chris? No, just cut them and go, cut them and go. Take your time there, Chris. Yeah. No need to smile either. Yeah, just try and look like you're enjoying yourself. Whoa, 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 hold on. Stop the show there. What is going on in the background? I've just seen your legs, Gary. That's just, uh, yeah, very pasty, I would say. <laughs> and uh, that reminds me, I need to cancel the milk before I go on holiday. Oh, well, yeah, you are away on holiday. Going anywhere nice? I'm going to Mauritius. All right, that's, okay, that'd be lovely. Will we get some photographs of the wiring systems from Mauritius? Well, hopefully, because heavily Indian influenced, actually. So I'll, uh, I'll see what I can find a lot of and try and see if I can find a local electrician who'll let me uh, experience uh, what they have to go through. Talking about that, one of the uh, hotels that you didn't choose that you've been to before, is it still available to actually book holidays to it? Uh, no, there was a big fire. Yeah, oh, right, okay. so I'm pleased I didn't reboot that one. Maybe that was a wiring fault. Maybe if you could have been. suggested well, obviously those Indian warrants, no, twisting cables could, together. Yeah, probably when the last time I was there, probably had a lid off the consume unit, seeing what the wiring system was like. Come on, we all do it. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, so, I think Chris, I think he was, your legs have distracted him, Gary. He keeps looking that way, doesn't he? I suppose he can't believe it, can he? So here we go. So we've done the, done the consume unit. Again, we've left yeah. the lid off, so I'm suggesting that's more of a, yeah. uh, a hometown thing, is it? No enclosure lids required, that easy access to the terminals. That's it, so I'll just take it easy there, Chris. Put what it I down. like about Chris, yeah, you pick a tool up, you put it down, and then you, yeah, you could have stripped all of them there and done that in one, but that is the secret on this challenge, is, uh, is uh, getting rid of the number of steps. And he's left it at the top as well, so he'll need to nip back up there if he wants it again. So we're four connections away from making off our BG socket outlet. Yeah, we're back up now, we've got our strippers back in our end. We're gonna use them a few more times now. Yeah. They are from Wago as well, aren't they? Or Vago, as you'd like to call it. They are pretty good as well. People are finding them really easy to use, aren't they? They're all stripped. Yeah. Apparently, it speeds up a job. It does it. Okay. Whoa! Oh, no, no. A bit of, on a bit of skin there. We're almost into uh, deep breath. Into into JB territory. Uh, half JB. Was that a third of a JB? Was that an eighth of a JB? We a little. Well, we a little. I don't know. A little bit of crack. Mm. Okay, <laughs> there we had that. We don't want any more of that. So yeah, we're not on a JB moment. Yeah, no, that's okay. it. nearly so, there. Oh, hold so on. Splitting our seat. PCs. Is that requirement now, the 18th edition? I think uh, high integrity is almost on the way out now. I think, uh, yeah, was it ever a, really a requirement? Who invented that one? I couldn't find out the last time I had a uh, discussion on that one. But nice uh, to see that Chris is keeping up with it. So splits the CPCs. We're almost there. We've just got to get that cover back on, Chris. Yeah. We're oh, oh, there's a novel approach to mm. uh, getting the back. But why? Shame you can't do that on site in most cases. I can't see you uh, yeah, tugging a twin and earth back under the floor to get the uh, socket in the wall. <laughs> Not when it's blasted in. Okay, so two screws away from completing this time. So those people who put four... Oh, no. Not again. Those people who put four minutes are in are probably not going to win this one this week. So I imagine it's a little... Oh, oh, there thanks. we go. Saved our blushes with a JB. Yeah. So Chris, that, that certainly looked fun for us. How, how did you find the challenge? It was the first time I've actually wired a UK double socket. I did do a little, get a little bit of practice with a single socket, but it's the first time in my entire life that I've wired a UK double socket. Um, so how did you find it generally, conduit? I think the, it was a, it took a little bit of practice to get the the cable the wire in through the first stretch up the from the box to the the trunking, and then I was finally I struggled with the with getting it from the trunking into the DB. That was a little hard because it was a smaller conduit and it was a bush ring on there. So, but. And it's cold, yeah, and things like that. It's good to get the excuses in early. Garrison was pretty consistent in terms of times. You, you came in at a, a reasonable time, and it's consistent after that. I, I don't know how I did, so we'll, we'll find out. Where, where do you think you are? Do you want to be on? I just hope I'm not there. Okay, you don't want to be over there with Carl hauling his own over there? Yeah, I just hope I'm on this side. Okay, well, let's see. Crush the Evolved. Do I turn left or right? Well, the good news is I'm going to my right. And <laughs> looking at the board here... You did this in six minutes it and okay. <laughs> 39 seconds. You're officially the fastest Indian on the board. The only Indian is yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he fumbled around a bit there to get it on, wasn't it? It's all <laughs> back in his knees when he's trying to get down there. I was, just, Mauritius. I, was, I was just, my eyes were just drifting up the board to that, that time and you get to, is, is it Matt at 3.09 and yeah. then Ross at 2.53? Everybody says that. When they come in, they, 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 
not so, necessarily and that, and that was crash. His time without the brrr, yeah, one yeah, yeah. And, he, and he only yeah. had two attempts. He had a warm up attempt. He did the time. He got top of the leaderboard, and he said, "There's ten seconds in that." Rocket Ross did. So he said, "I'm going to leave it because it's like." You, do you remember the what was the? Uh, I'm going to get it wrong. Was it the Russian pole vault? Can we say that nowadays? The one that used to just come <laughs> use the word well, Russian. Well, yeah, I, I, just, it, I, mean, I just, think it's. <laughs> but he used to go a centimetre higher every time in the pole vault. Right. Now he could have gone, but there was always oh, a gone bonus. Like half a meter higher. Or, well, he could have gone a good lump. Yeah. So there was always a bonus at one of these um, athletic meets. If you got a world record, there was like a twenty or fifty thousand so pound. So he reset it every time. So he just went just up another centimetre. So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, so his left. So good old Ross has left. I reckons at least ten seconds in it. But but it's like the Matrix. So when he when he pulls it up the condo, he just lays flat and just flicks it round the bend in the top. I, it's I just like, cannot it. picture anyone doing it faster than that. Nah. And, and that did his time that was second on the leaderboard first. So he should have improved twice and he got slower. Unbelievable. Matt thought he'd got it. There is a little bit of, I don't want to say luck, but you know, there's, everything's got to go right as well, hasn't it? You know, you've got to get it out the top of the tube. Yep. Perfectly first. If you don't, you're never going to beat Max's time. You know, no, it's, it's, not. Not. it's that simple, isn't it? You know. Okay, well, th we, we can't hide from the fact we're going to have to fess up now. So obviously there's going to be a little bit of a copyright issue because it looks like... Um, I borrowed somebody's uh, company logo. <laughs> I'd like to suggest I created it myself. It, it didn't take a lot. It was a blue circle with some letters in it. And that reminds me of another logo that was created on paint, which was a blue circle with some... But we won't go there. So we've obviously now got a JB. So if, you're, uh, if we're likely to see, I don't know, your undercarriage as the uh, aeroplane is taking off, okay, if they're all, uh, all there for us to see, we're going to bring in our JB logo. So we've now got... The Ramo, the half Ramo. We've got the Maloney, and now we've got the JB. I think as, I we had think, a whiff of crack as I well. I think it's that. fair to say that uh, JB has gone from finding it hilarious to is uh, yes, does, does, <laughs> the, <laughs> is, is the relationship soured? There might. I'd say there's a bit of ground to be made up. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think there's a bit of ground to be made up there. And he's great as well because he's done. He's got I think four more segments for the uh, live stream. We do four apprentices as well coming up. If we can continue to work with him after that, I'd be amazed. But no, thank you as always. JB is a great sport, and if you're not following him on Instagram, you ought to be. For all round knowledge, the bloke's got an incredible amount of knowledge and does some really good little videos in order to get that knowledge across. So yep. thank you very much, JB. If we have offended you, no doubt when I turn my phone off airplane mode, I will find out what <laughs> you've got to say. Okay. It was great though, wasn't it? Come along, Chris. Did it? He spent yeah. a whole day up here with me. Yeah. He, he travelled all over the place. He'd been to Farnborough, I think, down to the um, fully charged show. He'd been to yeah. uh, Harrogate to uh, the elect show. He'd come and see us. He'd been on the train here, there, and everywhere. Brilliant. I was, I was genuinely disappointed that I didn't get to meet him. I yeah. really would have liked to, but it just, yeah, just wasn't to be this time. And again, let's unpack some of the things he talked about. I put some pictures in. I asked him kindly to send me some random images of stuff, so I've just uh, buried those into the actual uh, footage there. And yeah. probably didn't make a lot of sense. I just kept bringing them yeah, in. Yeah. Um, that you don't get electricity in all parts of India for, for hang on, let's get it right, it's 724, which way, 24 uh, yeah. by 7. Yeah, I couldn't, 24 couldn't by it, 7, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we, that's, that's odd, isn't it? Imagine not having electricity all the time. It is, yeah, but again, it was one of the things when I was teaching, back to the, back to the thing, when I was teaching, I used to, and we used to talk about the, the grid and generation and transmission distribution and all that stuff. I, I always used to try and you know, say to the learners that you know, actually we're, we're quite you know, fortunate in this country that you know, we have electricity pretty much all the time. You know, if something goes wrong, there's a blackout. It tends to get fixed quite quickly. <laughs> Storms aside, um, but you know, it's <laughs> but actually, we we have a really reliable electricity supply, and we massively take it for granted. We really do. You know, and there are countries, you know, like like Chris was saying, and other places. Um, where it, it's just not there all the time. You know, you have like you have time slots to do your electrical stuff. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we're quite blessed, really. So, yeah. but, he, but he said, I don't know he said it in, in the, uh, the VT, but he said nearly everybody's got a mobile phone in India. You know, pretty much mm. everyone's got one, but they mm. haven't got electricity. Mm. Yeah, twenty four seven. Strange, isn't it? Strange it's world. Odd. Yeah, odd. Strange. Really odd. But no, great. Thank you for coming along. And as always, we, we welcome visitors. Always, you have to book yourself in. Uh, it's usually the odd slot that we come in, the odd Wednesday. That's the best time to come and see us. And there's people like the great Mark Allison. At the minute, I can't get him a slot before October. No, he's normally on. I don't yeah, I know. He's a busy man. He might yeah. get it on catch up. And also, uh, residual currents asked to come up. I think he thinks I'm avoiding him. I'm definitely not uh, as we go through. Okay, so we're going to turn yeah. back over now to our prize givers. JB still loves you. Oh, does he? Yeah. I still love him too. He's he's a he's top bloke. We, we met him we, as well. Yeah, he's, and we fell fell a little bit in love with him when he was up here. He was really good. We're going to turn over to our resident uh, uh, postal team. So if I turn on their mics. 
Well, let's turn them on. Okay. We're going to bring them in. Here they are. Okay, Hello, then, so it's not on. down to us anymore. We've been, had another job taken from us. Away you go. Yeah, so it's prize time again. And this week we're doing that differently as well. Rick's been working on his code. So instead of having to write all the names down and put them in a hat and pick them out, he's now got the software to draw them all in and pick two at random. So, so well, what do you think? Shall we go for the challenge wall time first or are we going to go with the swap shot? That's yeah, it. we'll... we'll, we'll, we'll Let's go with the, the challenge wall time, soon as we've, yeah. just, we've just run through it then. Eh? So the, uh, nobody got it exact. Uh, the, nearest, the nearest we got was 27 seconds, uh, which was Ryan Fuller who got it at, at 6 minutes 12. Uh, so Ryan Fuller, you're the co closest time to the, uh, the challenge wall. Congratulations. Now then, for, the, for Gary's swap shop, we've got two winners. They are as follows. Congratulations to that tall guy and Clyde Parsons. Well done. You have both won. So well done. Yeah, so those are the prize winners. And Chris, that was a valiant effort. I think you were pretty close to Rick, if I'm correct. <laughs> I won't fire off, but uh, I mean, this was a while ago. I think I had one arm tied around my back as well at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think you're due a, a replay eventually. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. prize winners. We'll see. All good. <laughs> Back to you two down there. Thank you very much. <laughs> top, top banter from the yeah. engine room up there. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. do more of that, I think, because yeah, it like takes that. a little bit. We just, we yeah. just sit it's really like sit there giggling, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You said, are the mics on your mouth? Yeah, yes, yeah. they are, so we can't say anything. <laughs> just, just a quick one, because obviously we need uh, the dress of the gentleman, which I've already gone blank, who's won the GT time. You need the Get Involved tab in the description. I've won a prize. Please leave us your details in there. That's all you need to do so we can post it out. And how long does it take for us to get the post out? It takes 28 days uh, from the start of process. Okay. And, and we define when the start of process starts. We do. Okay, I know we live in an era now where allegedly you can get same-day delivery, but we're yeah, leaning sure. into an, an era when I was a lad, when it was P.O. Box, and it will take up to 28 yeah. days for delivery. I, th I think we've yeah, said it in a recent podcast that we don't quite have the logistics heft of Amazon just yet but we're working on it so okay. bear with us. The other two people that have won you've got to go and get the address from the description in order to send me uh, three formulas that you remember from the time at uh, college and a note and make sure on the note you send us along so that you also have your address that would be very helpful and then we recommend that we probably get your prize in the post in how long? 28 days. 28 days. And we define the start of the process. <laughs> okay, we are trying to we'll be over <laughs> Okay, yeah. So uh, we apologise for people that are waiting. Keep pestering us, and we'll keep uh, keep moving that 28 days uh, down the road. So oh, no. Are the guys upstairs? Mike's still on. Oh yes, probably. Oh, good, good thinking. Good shout, D D K H. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Were well, they talking? Well, they, so that reminds us of our teaching days, doesn't yeah. it? People being annoying in the background. That wouldn't have happened in your classroom. Well, well, just, not for long, anyway, would it? Guys? No, we, we, yeah, we, we, yeah. There's uh, there's a couple of opinions we're interested in. Mine's the only one. So yeah, that's <laughs> Ollie's, the one. Ollie's asked, "Is there running water and electricity in Yorkshire yet?" So I think he's. Uh, yeah, I think he's viewing Yorkshire. Well, I think uh, in uh, Scrapby, they're digging their own uh, fresh spring well as we speak. I think Gordon's out there with a the spade. He's not commented. Oh, oh, oh I was just going to say he's not commented for a while, and he's literally, <laughs> just as I was saying that, he's come back with upstairs mic still on. All right, okay. <laughs> so, we apologise there, folks. <laughs> Okay, so we're just we're going to try them once more. I'd like to thank our new sponsor for this uh, live stream. I'd like to thank My Energy. I'd like to thank uh, Marshall Tuflex, Luden Palazzoli. I'd like to thank the great people at uh, Wago or Vargo, depending on how you want to say that. I'd like to thank the good friends at BG Lasico for supporting this. And one more. Don't cast the cables. It is, yeah. It's on the <laughs> massive screen in front of us. I don't, you know, for anyone else who watches the other person that does it with me, who's currently in Scrappy, creating a, a temporary shelter for himself and his wife's just finished the bingo. And I'd like to say on the update on the bingo, he did send a message to suggest she didn't win anything. She was very close to uh, four corners. Is that is that for real or are you? Yeah, no, no, for, for real. She sent a message saying she almost got four corners. That was the closest she got to see. Four corners. Four corners. You have to get the four corners first. And I, it was don't, a lot I don't gamble, yeah, so I don't know so, anything uh, about yeah, that. So it's not gambling, it's bingo. Okay, is, is <laughs> we it, can recall on gambling later, but sure. <laughs> okay, so that's where we are. So we've done the prizes. We've, we've thanked the people that help us keep the lights on here. Yep. Okay, we've uh, probably <coughs> patched up our relationship with JB as well. So <laughs> Possibly buried the one with Gordon. Okay, uh, with who? Gordon. Oh, Mauritius. Mauritius. I think it's time to slip into uh, what we like to call the plug and socket. So if you want to open those twiglets, this so is the time. 
Twiglets. I love a Twiglet. Crack, crack your Twiglets uh, yeah, open. Let us know your opinions on Twiglets in the comments, please. Yeah. I love Twiglets. Right by your mic. <laughs> Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> so you've got your Twiglets still on. Okay. I love Twiglets. Problem is, once you start, you can't stop it. And, and I'm worried, uh, they're crunchy, aren't they? So I'm worried you're going to get that. Well, just put your mic down. <laughs> Okay. All right, so I think we're going to dive back into the comments. We've got some great stories from when we were apprentices. So we both apprentices at 16. Okay. I must admit I was a complete lunatic. Um, and again, it goes back to, I tried really hard at everything I've ever done. I really do try hard. It doesn't mean I'm any good at it, but I do try really hard. But on reflection of what I expected out of people that I saw and then what I was like at 16 in a different generation, um, I didn't, I didn't ever take my computer apart, the Spectrum 48K. We didn't have the rubber keys, I had the hard keyboard. Wow. I didn't have the rubber keys, wow. I had the hard keyboard. Didn't even know that was a thing. Didn't have the one with the disc drive, we had the cassette player that played the doo -doo. And you used to have to be an absolute <laughs> wizard on the- on the, the music uh, of my youth. Yeah. <laughs> you, had to be a, you had to be a wizard on the volume control in order to get, there was, a, there was a game with a red car in it that used to race around, that was quite popular. Anyone remember that? Stick that in the comments. No, I can't remember what it was. So. I never took that apart. I never took my bike apart. I never, I, 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 I'd skateboard. I took the, I took the uh, wheels off and the bearings out to grease them, things like that. Never really painted the fence at home or anything like that. And you just think, I went from effectively that school environment at 16, wanting to be an electrician, having never done it, never got a taste for it, never did any, cr you know, never went to a college to see anyone mm. do it, never did a taste a day or anything. My work experience was at an engineering place because there was no electrical uh, work experience. Got an apprenticeship. Boof, I'm living away, trying to, trying to, at 16, I spent six months of my year in Nottingham. Big change, isn't it? Yeah, big change, yeah, big expectation. And I must admit, and this is where Finn will be pleased to hear this one, when I went to work, I was absolutely shattered. So I'd go to work, we'd have an hour and a half bus journey each way when we lived in Nottingham. So we got up really early, got on a bus, drove there, spent an entire day training in the most intense environment ever <clears throat> um, with the training centre I was at. Uh, for Western Power it is now, but it was Eastman's Electricity before. I get on the bus and go back, and unless we were going out, okay, so the early part of the week we weren't, unless we were going out, I'd virtually go to bed after that. Mm. So like six, sorry, and I wouldn't get home until about six eight. So seven thirty, I'd be in bed, out like a light. So, so it was work, sleep, <coughs> work, sleep. Yeah, because the nervous energy, just mm. being under so much pressure mm. and not wanting to let anyone down. I'm so pleased I got this job, and. It, it, it done me. Was it, was it an apprenticeship? Was it boot camp? That sounds it, like it was. It was oh, a great story though. So we're we're there first day, first first week. Let's go first week. So we're all there. We're in this room with all glass all around us at the top, and it's a, the, the workshop training center. We've got hard hats on, chin straps. We've got a full full body overalls on and clothes underneath. Okay, yep. so you're standing there and it is baking. We're talking end of August. I mean, it's absolutely baking. And we're all standing in a line and you know out the corner of your eye, sometimes you can, you can get a whiff of what's going on, but you can't really look. And I've got like this, a little corner of my eye and I'm thinking, he's wobbling. He could go, and I'm thinking, Okay, if, if he hits the deck, there's a good chance we ain't wearing these hard hats again. He went, I mean, he put his entire face, Ooh. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's in one of them, entire face into the floor. The chin strap bust oh. all the bottom of his chin. He had to have it, is it taped? what they do? They glue it. Yeah. yeah and then they had yeah. like, like these little bits of tape. They looked horrendous. Oh. I mean, he made an absolute disaster of his face and we didn't have to wear our hard hats again. So I'd like to thank him. I can't remember his name. I'd like to thank him for taking one for the team because we'd only had a couple of days and I didn't want to wear that. That's making out. my chin ache. Oh, he, made a, he, made a, he ruined his face. Absolutely good, ruined it? it. So brilliant that was. I thought it was good of him. Pole position, the video game? Probably was, red yeah. Car. Red car pole position. No, no, that was a racing game. No, mm. it, was, it, was a, it, was a, it was like a set in California or somewhere like that in a red two-seater. That was the one. So if you know me out. Flag. Outrun. 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 I'm sure that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Someone, have someone, someone, someone confirm in the chat for me. I'm sure it was that one. Like Renegade as well. Look at that. Did you did you play Renegade? That was good. Oh, Renegade oh, one, two, oh, three. Oh. Oh, is he back? Mauritius. <laughs> Mauritius is back. Okay. It's midnight and scrappy. <laughs> well, it's not. <laughs> and I'm off out on the trawler at eight a.m. Great show. Well, we just like to say Mauritius. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We're, we're sure you've uh, you've probably run a gauntlet there to, <laughs> to get joined in. And it, um, so thank you. That is really going to be to show up. And we've all made a promise this summer, haven't we, that when we go on holiday, that we actually go zero yeah, phones so off. Yeah, yeah phones off all the rest of it. and uh gordon is away on holiday and he did tell you i think in that's why i've been leading to scrap because he did say in the thing he was in mauritius for yeah for a couple of, he's only there for 12 days and he's he, that bloke doesn't stop so he richly deserves yeah, every minute he can have yeah. and yeah. if he has watched us which it sounds like he has great but please turn your phone back off and yeah, yeah, yes yeah, yeah. we're making an appalling effort of the list that we've been left 
Okay, yeah, everyone's confirming it. Outrun as well, by the way. Outrun. Outrun. It is Outrun. But I, I said that like no, three you times. didn't. Was I literally said, can you confirm yeah. in the comments? And everyone's going, yes, it was Outrun. <laughs> Doesn't sound right, though. No. Okay, thank you very much for that. So, um... So Gorn's gone and left us. Okay, yeah. so that was that. So that was a one one story. I've got lots of stories I can't tell. So you ever meet me at a trade show and if you want some of the stories of the things so, we got up as an apprentice? So, so like long movie. long term supporter of the channel and uh, and winner tonight. That tool guy, we yeah. also know him as Torchy. We met yeah. you down at um, Future Build, Build we did. which was really nice to meet you. Um, I remember my first month of my apprenticeship. Finished a job at one a.m. So that's a late finish, and got gaffer tape to the front of a transit and driven home from Harwich to London. Oh, wow. I mean, we all like the banter, but that yeah. sounds dangerous. That I looks mean, like whiffing on, yeah, whiffing on, yeah, that is yeah, not good. That's not good, is it? That's no, not good. not good at all. Yeah. So, uh, so, right, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's good, it's good. But you've got a story about a cup of tea before we go to your Dr. Chris Horn story. <laughs> oh, so what's your cup of tea story? <laughs> so people, people who know me will know I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, I wouldn't say I was a clean freak, but I don't like, uh, like, I wash my hands a lot. I like my hands to be clean and stuff. And uh, you know, I don't like, I don't like people like touching my food and stuff. I, it freaks me out a little bit. And do they prepare it then in the restaurant? I we try really hard not to think about it. So that's good. Um, and we were working one time at this. Uh, it was an allotment, and I mentioned this in the Electrical News Weekly recently. But just to just to fill in some of the gaps, we were working at an allotment in Leicester. Okay. And it was they were building like a little community centre in the allotment, and it was not you know it was a nice idea. It was a little village hall almost in a, in the city oh, right, centre, okay, so it was quite a good idea. Um, we doing it for free. No. Oh, right. it was paid work, was it? Well, it sounded a good story. Now it was one of those council-funded jobs, so there was ah, you know. So you're taking money off the council, okay? Carry but on. like, the, but you know, the allotment uh, sort of people, like they, they had like a little kind of like trust that they had to manage. So there was like a little board of governors of the oh. allotment and stuff. And honestly, it's like oh, they the more I think they, about it, they sound like my kind of people. It's a, it's. It would make a brilliant setting for a sitcom. So oh, right. I think I th sort of the allotments and sort of the hierarchy and the political squabblings and stuff that went on in there. It was it was, it was good fun, um, and 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 I mean talk about you know, you know if you if you're growing a garden, your plants are precious. I totally get that, but like we were given directions about you know you can't you cannot step on that bit of soil because there's tubers in the ground okay. waiting to grow again next year. Can't even put your foot on it. You know it's like, okay. so it was a bit you know we had to be careful. And the, the head chap there, lovely, lovely man. Hedge chap. There. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> Always on. <laughs> lovely man, made me a cup of tea one time. And I, when I was on site, I'm a big tea drinker, I love tea. But when I'm out and people's homes are on site, if people make me drink, I normally have coffee. What was his name, Doug? Oh, this, was, this was a long time ago. <laughs> no, they took his spade off him, so he's Douglas. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he was a, he was a gardener. And so, I mean, like, the, the soil, like, there was more soil under his nails than there is in my garden. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. It was properly, like, properly grubby hands. And he made me a cup of coffee. Oh, and no. And he made it about right. And no. honestly, I, no. I still to this day don't know how someone can do this. No. As he put it down. Oh. I'm going to get close to the camera for this. Oh. This is important. I know what you're going to do. I'm going to try and get it in shot. As he brought it to me, he went, there's your tea. Oh. <laughs> dipped, his, <laughs> dipped his thumb fully, fully into the cup. Like, submerged oh. his thumb in it. So there was absolutely no way that that was getting. I just couldn't, couldn't face it. It was not good, not good. Yeah. Was there any females there that could help you out? Lily or Rose could have jumped in and obviously helped you out with another beverage. Was there anyone there? No. <laughs> so that's enough garden-based puns, I think, for one show. Uh, we should have practiced that. We could have had them all on the board. We We're trying to win those ones. I was like the entire time thinking of what to become manager of a hedge fund. God dear. Okay. So yeah, so that's yeah, that's a, a classic moment. So, talking to tea ones. Whenever we went into and we did some work that, um, yeah, it took some deep breath moments to do in certain areas of Northamptonshire. And whenever we go in, I was always like the one running around doing stuff. So I'd always be the one that'd say, would you like a drink? Yeah. So I'd, I'd make a decision based on the facade. <laughs> However, I would always make a decision based on the facade for my colleague, who I would always ask for a drink for. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want one, but... Uh, and whoever I was working with, they definitely would like one. And then I'd see the tea being delivered in a cup that may have been washed up once, you know, yeah, and yeah. then I'd sit there waiting for them to wonder where they can get rid of it. In the very early days of my apprenticeship, we did a rewire on a, uh, a, a student accommodation. It had been used by students, yep. like at the uni, at Leicester Uni, through the, through the year. And, it, and the smell from the fridge, at one oh. point, someone opened it and we had to, like, evacuate the building. Oh. It was just... Not good at literally sort of stomach turning. I, I mean, I've got weak stomach. I mean, I'm, I'm not good with this either. And it was, it was, it was one of those jobs where you, you took a deep breath outside the kitchen, <sighs> went in, 
did a bit of chopping in for the uh, for the boxes and then legged it back out again and got some fresh air. It was ghastly, oh, absolutely awful. Dude, no. I Not mean, oh, I'm, I've got the world's weakest stomach oh, as well. Yeah, you know, when you watch that Ant and Deck in the jungle <laughs> where they, where they start eating before. stuff, those celebrities, you think, I, can't watch I just, that. I just couldn't do it. And you're not that. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah. I'm not suggesting there'll be, a, but you're just, I just, I can't. I, I, I couldn't eat salad. They'd bring, they'd bring <laughs> out a salad and say, "Would you eat this?" I'm like, "I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here." I, was like, I can't <laughs> eat a salad. It's just lettuce. But, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> Everyone's going hungry. I'd go back and say, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'll, 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 Sorry, I'll folks. Yeah, yeah they want to eat cabbage. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. Oh, it was green yeah. and oh, it moved around a bit. What was oh, it, a lettuce? I am <laughs> loving the idea, though, of, of get Gary on I'm a celebrity. That I mean, that would be yeah. worth what. I'm just picturing that opening credits. Bum, 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 bum. Anton Deck doing little puns on your name. Oh, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, be like, yeah I just yeah, I won't be around it. There's a lot of things missing with my chance to actually do that, OK? There's it's, 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 think, cause it's, my, it's my dream. I would love one day to be on Richard Osman's House of Games. I would love to go on that show. Well, what's stopping you going on it? Oh, I'm not a celebrity. You've got to be famous. It's a, it's a celebrity thing. So I would, I would okay. love to go on that show. And it's like, it's literally like, I, when we watch it, I, I, I literally daydream about the things that I'll say on there. So oh, like right. when, they, when they do the fondue set, the day they have the fondue set okay. as a runner, my entire life has been building up <laughs> to win that fondue set. <laughs> I'm taking okay. that home. I'm, whatever, I'm taking that home. Apologise for having nobody watching the show at this point. Okay, that's good. <laughs> now, we mentioned uh, my energy and... You know, we've been looking at that Zappi 2 EV charger almost as it come out of the, the factory, haven't we? We have, though, didn't yes, we? I was we just wondering where you were going with this. But we yeah. were one of the first people to look at that um, unicorn device. The one yeah, that the actually, yeah, 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 and yeah, the yeah. Zappi 2. We had the Harvey and the Eddy, and we absolutely love it. And we love the people down at uh, my and Jim. We even got to, you weren't with us, we got, I got to meet Jordan down yeah. at um, Farnborough at uh, the Fully Charged Show. Fully Loaded, Fully yep. Charged. Fully Charged Show, yeah. yep. Which was brilliant, and she was lovely, as you expect. The whole family there is lovely. Yeah. However, when we were travelling around, and you had a segment where you had to interview Dr Chris Orn many times, didn't you, on this, oh, this road show. So Dr Chris Orn would be Not there, and we'd cut and, cut and repeat uh, for a different audience um, our interview. But you struggled to work out, first of all, his name and who he worked for, and you tended to confuse him. Give us an example so, of the sort of things so, you do. So this is when we were doing the live feed shows. Yes. So this was when we were, we were touring uh, the which country. We class this as eFix TV, which is the live stream. stream yeah. yeah, yeah. So we still do live feed events, don't we, through the year, but this is, this is the live stream. And... Um, yeah, and I used to do an interview with him, and I just I'd, I'd misunderstood his role in the company. I thought he was one of the, the founders, <laughs> and so I remember <laughs> at least once I introduced him as oh now we've got we've got Doctor Chris Horn because he's a doctor as well. That's quite important. <laughs> Doctor Chris Horn, uh, who uh, is uh, one of the founders of My Energy, you know, one of the found, and, he, and immediately, you know, well, that's very kind of you, Joe, but actually, I'm not one of the founders of mine. And he's he's such a lovely, charming, sort of easygoing chap, isn't he? Very passionate, but he very is. he's. he's He's a top man. But when we got off stage, you, you then leaned into your story all the time when we were travelling around the country because you then introduced him as Dr. Zappi, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah, the inventor of the horn. I think, I think I decided, and it was literally like the show where we got locked down, where we, we, couldn't, we couldn't go out because of, yeah. of the pandemic. And uh, I, I said to you, right, this time I'm just going to lean into it. I got it wrong so many times, I'm going to properly lean into it. And I think I, think I was going to say, we'd now like to invite to the stage Dr. Chris Zappi, the inventor of the horn. <laughs> Which would have been. <laughs> I, I still regret that I didn't get the chance to do that because no. I think that would have been a brilliant Just moment. Just so, yeah. so many times that we yeah. got it wrong. What a great bloke, though. And oh. we've, we've done a Gordon did an interview with him that's gone like two hundred thousand views. One, isn't it? one of our most popular long format videos. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was that was good. That was uh, mm. that was uh, where was it located in? Was it Grimsby you went to? Because Gordon still called it Yorkshire when he got there, didn't he? Uh, and rather than Lincolnshire. Been Lincolnshire, are we? That, is that, is that near Grimsby? Or, or Have I got my usual geography thing? Mixed up. Or, no, yeah. I think no. Grimsby. Please tell me if I'm right. I'm never right. Okay. So that's, an, that's another great story, obviously. Your, your, your Dr. Chris Horn one. Okay. Any other fond memories of your apprenticeship? No. So we've got... <laughs> so we've got... Oh, that's, a, that's an awful one. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, don't do that. So apologise. No, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. we, we won't do that one. Um, someone suggesting we should watch the Drain Unblockers channel on YouTube. Okay. I think that's a reference to our weak stomachs, maybe. Oh. Maybe that would... Well, I can't watch that hoof guy. Maybe that one. The one with oh, the... Oh, that's brilliant. Oh. I watched the other one. There's another chap called the Hoof GP, Scottish bloke. No. He's, but honestly, his videos are phenomenal. No. Not just no. what he does, but the, like the backdrops of I've the I've got the world's weakest dog. But it's just like watching someone having their toenails trimmed. Yeah, again. 
Yeah, actually, I couldn't copy that either. <laughs> I don't know why I gave that as an, uh, just, as an example. I just flicked YouTube on. I've got very precious moments to myself. Ooh, so okay. I, I was watching somebody having their hoofs uh, uh, taken with angle grinder. Dan Sparky in training. He's got an experience for us. Had a tooth knocked out when I was a HGV apprentice. They were firing elastic straps with a 25 mil plastic ball on them. Again, it's all fun and games till someone loses a tooth. Yeah, yeah. Cool. takes an eye out or... Cool. That's like, right. Again, yeah, that's makes like... the parts of my body ache when we talk yeah, about that's, that's not, yeah, that's mm. not, yeah, that's not, yeah, we're trying to make ours, ours fun, really. So <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You've got yeah. it borderline sadistic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, I thought we were going to read some. No, 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 okay. no, no. no. <laughs> So again, it's 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 <laughs> the apprenticeship thing's one of those, and you've got to you've got to be a special kind of person if you take somebody on. But you've got to be a special kind of person that then becomes a teacher, is what we said earlier on. And I'm not sure everybody remembers that role. That actually, if you could have a firm with the old guy, you know, so yeah. you've got that old miserable person that nobody wants to really work with. We'll just substitute a name in now. Gordon, we'll call this person. So they work within a business and they're, and they're miserable. They've got no connection to the younger people in society. And you, you see them and you think, oh, please don't send me with Gordon. Please don't send me. And actually, it's the best thing in, in ever to get sent with Gordon because they're, they're old, they're slow. You know what I mean? They've got arthritic <laughs> limbs. And... Um, they're going to sit and they're going to want to train you up to be an electrician. So, of course, they're going to show you how to do stuff because the more stuff you can do really well, the less stuff they'll have to do over time. But you don't appreciate the time because there's probably other people there that whiz around in vans that, that feel the same age as you because they might be in their early 20s and you've got more in common with them, perhaps football or socially, you've got a lot more in common with them. But going with the old, decrepit, stone-faced Gordon in the company, well, I would suggest would be... A good piece of advice. So if you've got that sort of person, I would suggest they're the sort of person to send your apprentice with. Yeah, I'm, I'm not for a minute suggesting <laughs> this Gordon is that person <laughs> that you've just described. But well, it's just a random name. I, oh, naturally. Well, yeah. could you use it out of a hat. No. Yeah. Uh, but no, that is good advice, actually. Yeah, the, the, the person the who's got all that knowledge, you know, got all that experience, maybe isn't the, the young, dashing, hilarious no, lad. Definitely, the, definitely not that. No, no, yeah, no, no, definitely no. Go, not go for the, the, the person who's got the knowledge, got yeah. the information and the experience. And, and actually... Probably underneath that kind of grumpy exterior, deeply cares about his job and actually will probably care about making sure you learn well. Yeah, and the, the thing I found, those people had exactly the right amount of time at breaks. Yeah. So if there was a 15-minute break, that was all you got. If there was a yeah. half an hour for lunch, the, that half an hour went like lightning fast. They wouldn't take a second more or leave early. Whereas obviously the younger brigade that were on the companies I was on in the apprenticeship were using more of a flexi-time approach. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I imagine you did every second you had to do because you you done that entire time when I talked with you, didn't you? Oh. We couldn't leave a second <laughs> no. before, and even though the building was we started, <laughs> yeah, started yeah, work, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, any yeah. good stories in there for us on their apprenticeships or any, any uh, we've, we've tales a, of woe? We've had a, a green, uh, a green contribution. We had a yellow one from Sockets earlier. Oh, what's a green contribution? I don't know. It's so, it, it's sent us some money. Some Zam uh, ZAR. I think we decided that was Zambian money, was it? Oh wow! Okay, so going, for, thank you very but much. It's, but it's coupled it with an insult, so that's oh, nice. right, okay. <laughs> so he suggested I look, I look old. Oh. Guy on the he left just sent the old. money. The comment was enough on its own. He to, just keeps on giving. I had to double check the screen. I was like, <laughs> "You must not know his left from his right." <laughs> so thanks for the money, not so much for the insult. I'd like to say thanks for the insult, and the money was appreciated as well. So that's good. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so um, we don't do these things for, for, for super thanks, is it? But they are. Nice, I think. It, they? I think it is a super yeah. thanks. Yeah. So. Okay. Don't, don't or chat. Is it? I don't know on lives. I've never never experienced. Super. Chat on chat. live, isn't it? Okay, yeah, okay. so thank you for those. That's, that's good. Uh, hopefully, we've still got some people on. We've got some, but we're, we're in the plug and socket now, so we're off script. So, have we got anyone joining us still? Yeah, there's like uh, 59 still in. Yeah, oh, right so on such a glorious so that, that is fantastic. For joining us. So, we're not back until the 10th, are we, when we do our next one? You won't be with me. So I'll be back. Which is a shame. I've really enjoyed tonight. That's good. Yeah. No, no, it's good fun. And that's what we're finding from the feedback from the people, the guests that come along. We can say this now because we haven't got any guests with us. They, they are a little bit nervous when they arrive. They tend to get here about lunchtime and then they're, 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 they're walking about. They have to do the race walk. They're not happy normally about doing that until they do it and then they love it. And of course, then there's that build up, isn't there, to the live stream. We take them out for something. We didn't go mass stabs this evening, did we? No, I mean, I, again, you know, I like going to mass stabs because I, I like the bloke that uh, that works there. We love the bloke. Top, like, man, yeah, top, top man, man, but you, you get a little bit tired of the, the constant yeah. Indians. Yeah, don't you? Yeah. Like I said, I've got a really weak curry. stomach, so yeah. curry's never going to be the first thing. I, if I have two a year, I really enjoy them. 
I've won a week at the minute. Mm. You know, that's that's a little bit too many for me. Yeah. But again, because we love him so much that we, we obviously go down. We didn't go down today. So if you want to see what Rick had for his dinner, it is on our Instagram story, isn't it? God, it's massive, wasn't it? And it's he, like and he wolfed, yeah. Yeah, wolfed all that down. His wife saw it, so she uh, won't be getting him anything for supper well, this evening. Just speaking of which, just so, just so I've covered my bases, um, my daughter was on earlier and said, uh, well done or good evening or something. So I, I replied to her in the comments and, uh, and thank you. I know it was my daughter. She was on my wife's account. So okay. it came in under my wife's name. But I know it was my daughter because she sent me a little penguin emoji. Okay. And she's obsessed with penguins. So I know, Wait, that, is this was, the, I know that was Millie. Is this the older one? The older one? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the one you're getting a dog for? The one I am absolutely not getting a dog for. And you need to stop suggesting that I'm going to, to her. That would be great. Well, what's wrong with getting a dog? Let's let's do it live on telly. So why are you not buying? And I mean, you've got two beautiful kids, and I think it's yeah, quite cruel that you have that you have brought a dog. Because <laughs> what would make the family much better than two 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 small children, female children, running around with a dog? Well, the fact that I'd be the one who ended up having to feed it, walk it, pick up its feces. Uh, yeah, just just not interesting. That goes back to my weak stomach moment. So yeah. that does. So I went back not in the day, and, I, and I've been a lot better over since all year. Really, I've been a lot better all year. I used to enjoy the odd um, beverage. 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 Yeah, and those beverages were of um, maybe barley based or grape based <laughs> beverages. Like, yeah, I yeah. feel like Jeremy Clarkson when you do that. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm not trying beverage. to beverages. <laughs> I was saying, can I have a delicious uh, bicarbonated beverage? Um, so, yeah, so I, I, and I used to, and this was an extended period of time. So it's the entire time I've had chip, well, the entire time I've been older than 14 up until recently. So I'd enjoy these uh, beverages. And my kids wanted a dog, like all kids do. Yeah. And I just couldn't, I couldn't, like yourself, and hopefully your daughter's now gone to bed, but mm. I, I, the, the walking bit, lovely. The fact that it loves me to bits and, and it oh. doesn't get to a stage when the dog's 13 and thinks I'm a complete wally, like my daughter does. And my son, I don't know if his son's done quite so much of that, but you, you get less conversation out of them mm. until the point where it becomes yeah, non-verbal. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're giving out money, I tell you, they can string a sentence together when they think there's a whiff of pound notes around. <laughs> Must admit, both of mine perk up a little bit and tell me how much they love me. Yeah. But it was it was always down to that moment when I knew that I, I'd perhaps had a few beverages the night before. The dog would need a walk, and I'd, I'd feel compelled because I love yeah. the dog yeah, yeah. to go out and walk. And then, actually, you're carrying excrement for two and a half miles in a small polythene bag and it's warm mm. i just because you know what will happen is that you walk some distance it will do its necessaries you'll have to pick it up and that, that gets me because then bags look incredibly thin mm. and they might burst through at any moment and then it, it won't be cold will it when you pick it up yeah and then you've got to carry it sometimes and i thought to myself with my weakened stomach i don't think i could have got up after some beverages and uh, and do that yeah well i think even you know, well, beverages aside i would struggle with it i just yeah it's uh, i'd do it if i had to and but why, why is it not white why, anymore why would i put myself why don't we have white dog poo anymore when i was a kid it was all white nearly most oh you have a half and half half brown half white in the comments, what's well, happened to white dog poo? Kept the, uh, the intellectual rigour of the show higher tonight. But well, no, good, just, 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 it's, it's one of those comments. So it goes back to, yeah, my weak stomach. That's why we haven't got a dog. So you need to sell, tell, the, tell the children that you can't, you know, you can't walk some <laughs> distance with the dog's doodle in it. Oh, no, nothing not, more. Not. And when I see somebody walking a dog, and we live in a village, everybody's out with a dog. We're the only person in the village without a dog. They're all walking with a small bag. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. What are you going to do now? I'm going to take the dog out. And a small bag with me. You see, what I don't get as well, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but people, they, they walk the dog, the dog does its business. Yep. they very civically minded. They get the, the bag, they pick up the, the yep. business and yep. they seal it all up. And then the amount of times I see them hanging from trees oh. or like chucked into a hedge. No, no. And I just think, no, no. why have you gone to all the trouble of no, picking it no, up, no, no. carrying it some distance no. and then flinging it into no. a tree where it's never going to decompose? No. Or I just, I, I just don't get it. No, not me at all. I just don't get it. Friendship stories, though, again, uh, always welcome. Everybody in my uh, collective all passed. We all got through our, our qualifications, all gone off and done different mm. things. Two people <laughs> that I did apprenticeships with are now are millionaires. So that's always interesting, isn't it? That you all started out the same journey, same start line, and two people are now millionaires. One of them was my best mate at school, and he's doing fantastically well from him. I name him, but he's doing fantastically well. And the guy that stayed in the same accommodation to me uh, when I first went at 16 years old, yeah, just get on the bus and sit next to him. He also passed my C course for me. Yeah, that sat, was next good of him. sat next to him. Sat next to him. Choose your partners wisely. Yeah, he's a millionaire now as well. 
Yeah. How good's that? But that you can start off training to be an electrician and actually turn yourself into a millionaire. So, um, yeah, it's all good. One of the, uh, one of the chaps I did my, uh, not that I did my apprentice, <coughs> I was at college with. So I was the only apprentice at my business, but I went to college with and sat next to him. Um, Eddie, if I remember rightly. Eddie. Eddie. Uh, he, he was, he'd been banned from every major sporting event in the UK. Right. For being involved in football hooliganism. Oh dear. And he was a lovely chap. Oh dear. And we had, we had similar music taste. We got on really well. Again, I probably helped him out a little bit with his, with his you know, sort of questions and stuff. But yeah, I was, I was, I remember being, spending most of my apprenticeship college days just be, basically being petrified because I was surrounded by, you know, the bigger boys, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was still quite titchy at that stage. Hadn't quite had my growth spurt. And uh, yeah, as the nerdy, quiet, fairly clever one in the room, it was, uh, yeah, it was one of those, yeah, had to keep my head down and, and keep myself from, yeah, getting chucked in the skip at lunchtime sort of thing. But yeah, we got through it, we, you know, head down, power through. But it was, yeah, my, my, my college experience, zero reflection on the college. The college were brilliant. But yeah, I was just a very, very nervy, uh, quite quiet young man and found it quite a challenge to be in that room with those bigger boys. You know? oh, okay. It's quite interesting because a lot of the lecturers that taught me actually became work colleagues. So you're there at 16, being your 16-year-old self, and yeah. there is lots of stories I could tell you, but not on camera. Um, so obviously some of those things that I got up to and the collective of people, we, we got up to some terrible things. But um, yeah, so then within... What would that have been? About 11 years later, uh, I think all of them were still there within reason. When I came back, yeah, I joined them as a, a member of the team. It was a really odd experience. Being oh, on the uh, other side Tresham. of Yeah, Tresham, oh, right, on the other right. side of the fence. Oh, so I went from being Mr. Wallinger to Alan, how you doing, mate? It's what, one of my favourite things when I was at college. Uh, some people on here might know Neil McManus, who runs the electrical department at Leicester College. Um, and he's, he's fairly active on social media. He does bits and bobs for people. And he he's, been on, he's been on our channel a couple of times. He has. Now. And he's a, he's a top man. I, really, I get on really well with him. Um, and he's a little bit older than me. And I always used to joke with him that basically we did the course at the same time. And he was, I think, he, I wouldn't like to say, I think he's got about 10 years on me. I think he's a little bit older. He's an older 60, apprentice. 61, 62. Wow. And then um, <laughs> I'd always joke with him that as I was going back to finish up my NVQ to get all my paperwork sorted out, I walked into the staff room to get some, some things done. It was like, oh, you're all right, Neil. What are you doing here? Oh, I work here now. I'm teaching. It, was sort of, he kind of, it, it felt like he made the transition from the classroom to teacher in like months. You know, it was, it was absolutely bonkers. Yeah. But, uh, and now he runs, he runs the whole department. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a top man. But yeah, it was always an interesting experience walking in and finding a former classmate is now you know responsible teacher especially you know because he, he was a bit of a lad back in the day <laughs> <laughs> was, seems to be the way doesn't it i think that was the fear of taking me on that this yeah the lunatic that was once uh, in the classroom is now in the front of the classroom L lots of people confirming your white uh, dog business yeah, well, story was it yeah it's some people say it's more bone in their diet Okay. Ab Abattoir Jack saying because they had more. I just remember, as a, but again, what is nice? Saying, and we don't want to do this. We don't want to make you know, we're going to get into some trouble. But I, I used to go out on my BMX a lot, and, and you'd spend a lot of time not going in a straight line round stuff. And isn't it great now that that doesn't happen? How many times can you walk miles and miles and never see any? Yeah, well, like, yeah, so that I mean, is a I, great society's cleaned up their. I act. go running, yeah, three times a week. Oh, you had to get that out in, in did the field. You? <laughs> Tell us how that started off. So you 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 started doing five k from day one, did you? Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm, How far did you run I'm, when you I'm started? I'm doing the couch 2 5k. Okay. And I, I've, I've not wanted to make a big deal out of this because, well, let's because do it now. I find let's make it a big deal. really hard. See, so, I'm not a natural runner. It's really difficult. And does, do, do, do you get some uh, oral compliments in order to encourage you to run for a certain period of time and then you walk and then you run? Yeah, so it's the okay. Couch to 5k app. Yeah. So there's an app and so there's a lady speaking in your ear or okay. you can pick different people. Uh, so there's a lady speaking to you and she says, uh, you know, it's time for a run. We're going to run for 60 seconds. So you run for okay. 60 seconds. And it doesn't to, seem very long. You get to 45 seconds and your heart's bursting and you sort of, you know, I, I, I mean, there's been times when I've been, you know, running and, and shouting at the app at the same time going, come on, come on, that's got to be it now. Please, please. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, get to the end of the 60 seconds in the first week and, you know, you're almost on your knees sort of thing. Um, and, and then just build up and build up and it. Uh, yeah, so now I'm at the point where, and, and it doesn't sound impressive, but it is hard. I can now run for, I'm doing 25 minutes of solid running now, which That's is... Good. I, but, yeah. but, that, but that probably Pardon links into the whole theme of this. You only get the result when you put in the effort. Yeah. So when you start out in a new job or an apprenticeship or you take someone on, 
They're like on the couch, aren't they? Okay, <laughs> to get them to be able to run 5K, you've got to put a lot of effort. They've yeah, got to put some effort circle. in. They've yeah. got some encouragement in the ear, haven't you? Okay, yeah. you've got all of that going on. And then eventually, they can run the 5K. And then when you let them go off and do their own thing, they can yeah. probably run marathons if they yeah. want to. And, and they but, might be shouting at you occasionally because they're struggling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not yeah. personal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, just they're struggling away, and it? it's that, yeah. <laughs> And again, we've done this when we've gone around on the College Connections with eFix, which is, I mean, to say I love it would be an understatement. I'll get an opportunity to come out to colleges all across the UK, and I'm doing them every month in, during the academic year. I start again in September. But I'm quite harsh at times, and you can imagine what that looks like, with the people that are especially apprentices, because there's a massive disconnect with putting the effort in. Now, I, I hear a lot, if I could go back to school as an adult, I'd have tried harder. Or you get a lot of older people on the apprenticeships that have got a second second bite of this. Mm. They've managed to get an apprenticeship in their 20s or 30s or even later. Yet I go in there and I say things like, third year apprentices, can you name me the four types of RCDs? Yeah. And I've had so far a flat no. You were with me on one of them, weren't it? They didn't know, did they? No. Third year apprentices couldn't tell you the four. And they usually say three letters at us. What do they say? Oh, we normally get uh, it, the really good ones. <laughs> the ones who are really making an effort. You'll occasionally get B, C and D out of them. Okay. <laughs> well, 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 well we've, we've managed to grasp one from it. But, but again, they got... And, you, and I say to them, I say, you're not taking ownership of this. Mm. You, you're going to college for about five hours, and you don't get six hours out of the teaching staff with transitions. And then you're at work there's a massive disconnect here. You're not, you're not doing your learning in between. And, and some of them, you can see it really being quite a hard lesson for them from the point of view, not a, a lesson lesson. But they're like, I don't know the four types of RCDs. I don't know one of them should be installed. Mm -hmm. Yet I install RCDs all the time. Yeah. And, and it's like, well... Yeah. How many people are installing EV charge points? You know, you'll see some hands go up and they, they don't know <coughs> type A, type F. You know, it's, yeah. It is a little bit of a worry. B, one left. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we keep... We keep saying to them, we keep, we keep saying to them, you know, you need to, it's, your teachers are doing everything they can, Yes. but they can't teach you too much beyond the syllabus because they've got a set amount of time and a set amount of material. They've got to cover that to make sure that you, you pass your exam and get qualified. And so the stuff that, do, that isn't in the syllabus yet, and we know that education lags behind the real world by five, six years, it, it just won't be in there yet. And they don't have the time to deliver it yet. And that's where... As an apprentice, you need to take a little bit of responsibility for your own development as well. You can't just, you can't be a passive learner where you're just expecting to be poured up with knowledge. You've, yeah. you've got to go out and actively find it. Yeah. You know. And that links in nicely with Marcus, who's done some, some work with us. We talked with him and he's done some stuff for Efix. He's sort of our, um, what would you call him, sort of casual, he's, he's our a subcontractor a presenter. Same electrician. Yeah, yeah, same <laughs> yeah. subcontractor presenter. And he, he had the opportunity, someone knocked on his door, did exactly, he couldn't offer him a job, offered him work experience. But on the back of that, he's actually, because he's got that teaching background, he's obviously been teaching him as well, mm. but he's, he's gone and said to him, it's worth doing those CPDs on eFix, and actually said to him, if you want to do next week, when you come back, I need this certificate. And yeah. he's been quite harsh. So the guy's come back and gone, Eric's gone, well, I've got the certificate you asked me for, and he's got another week, yeah. and things like that. So it's sort of a, a little bit of carrot and stick with that, which is fantastic as well. But to not take ownership and not, you know, I'd quite like certificates. Do you, do you remember getting mm. certificates? Maybe? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, or you collected badges when you were in things like, you, know, you might have been scouts, cubs, guides, whatever you were in. But, you know, the, the, everyone likes a collection, don't they? But to get, you know, how many certificates are going to pick up on those CPDs? What have we got in there, 20 thereabouts? Uh, yeah, as, I think as a guess. About that, yeah, 19, 20. Yeah, with, with well, I mean, <laughs> there should be another four dropping in the next few weeks. Yeah. Know? But on one of them, you, you do understand the four types of RCDs. And yeah. as, a, as an apprentice electrician in the third year, it was a little bit concerning. And I've done it at one college. You did it at Leicester with me. Yeah. I've done it at every college I've been. We've yeah. yet to get it. I, I must, there will be an exception to that. When we went to uh, Newark College, they sent the learners from Lincoln College to mm. Newark College, one group of third year level three apprentices. And I mean, they crushed it. Yeah. The, the guy there is also named Joe. Um, he's, their, he's their tutor. I mean, I'm hoping, I'm not suggesting he will, so I'm hoping someone nominates him for Lecturer of the Year because mm. his group didn't let him down. He, he really sat there doing the old, oh yeah, 50 volts, <laughs> touch voltage, and then he explained it. Oh, I mean, it was just... As we like to call it, the Gary Hayes moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was just beautiful. Don't get yeah. me wrong, I don't think... Uh, yeah, one guy couldn't count, so we had him as the, as the maths group. So every time there was a calculation, I went back to him and he fumbled every number, mm. but he had a good, good fun doing it. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. So yeah, just coming coming back around to previous topic, Stephen Ayers has asked me, "Don't you get bored of running for twenty five minutes?" Yes, I hate every step of it. Yeah, I, I don't actually enjoy the running part at all. Oh right. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. You know, Didn't people you talk about mentally... that to runners high or ever. <laughs> awful, awful, and I can't. It's bad because I get to the end of like the first five minutes, and I, I feel like I feel awful, you know, and it's like. How am I going to do this for another twenty minutes? Oh, I, I, I find it really, really challenging. Yeah, it's not easy. Okay. So yeah, I, to, I get totally bored, and I just I listen to music in between the ladies shouting at me in my ear <laughs> to, to 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 tell me I'm doing really well. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really. Not. <laughs> I did my eleven a reef moment now, so like the Tenerife. And believe it or not, I, I did I did run. I've got a bad back, and every you know people who have bad backs who genuinely have bad backs. So I've got a lot of sympathy for you, but I used to love it when I could go running. Yeah. Because mentally, just letting now, I'd go at five o'clock in the morning. The reason I'd go at five o'clock in the morning was the competitive Gary wasn't there anymore. So I thought if oh, I run right. in the dark or really early, I'll see next to nobody. And I used to run at that sort of time. But of course, then when you get back and you've done your run, obviously you're awake. You're not mm. going to get back into bed. I had way more energy when I ran oh. every three, well, I ran every other day. So three to four times a week, yeah, yeah. my energy levels <clears> were through the roof. When I finish and I've done like my cool down stretches and stuff, yeah, I'm yeah. on top of the world. I feel like I can, you know, I can, I can take on anything. But the actual running part is, I find really difficult. I find that really, really hard. Is it because you're doing it on your own? I used to run with my neighbour for a while. Uh, it might be. Yeah, it might be. I don't, I, I don't know. And, and, and the thing is, I love, like I play football once a week and I love football. I love playing. I'm not very good at it, but I love playing. And, um, you know, obviously that's that's very physical, a lot of running, you know, a lot of... But maybe maybe there is a team element to it then, yeah, maybe it's having other people there that I like it. Or yeah. there's a bit, there is a little bit of skill involved, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to get the perfect pass in or you're trying to, you know, you're, there's always something to aim at, whereas running is just, just a bit monotonous really, I guess. But, you know, I, I want to, I just want to keep fit, you know. And when he's out next fit. time, we'll be looking for, for white dog poo. Okay, I would suggest. That's probably not. <laughs> I think well, we can always leave it on that note, so... <laughs> Okay, we, we thank you for joining us in the Plug and Socket, which is our way of just relaxing out the evening and hopefully finishing off yours. If you've stayed with us from the start to the finish, you deserve a medal. I'm sure Rick will come up with a piece of software at some point that suggests that you got from the start to the finish, and then we won't post you something out within 28 days for winning that one as well. Uh, we're back on the 10th of uh, August. Okay, we're back again. I think we're either into a double or a triple header on the race wall. I've got to go back through and check where we're up to on that. So I think we've got some double headers definitely coming up, and there is a triple header as well. So that'll be the Electrician's Challenge. You'll be back with uh, such classic as the news at Penn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd be interested again. You know, I think I think the people who stayed on now, we can suggest are the, the you know the hardcore followers. I've been wondering if news at Penn's starting to feel a little bit redundant. Okay. With having the proper news that I do weekly now, it just sort of I don't know if the news at Penn still has its place. So if you if you're still on and you and you like the news at Penn, yeah, that'd be great. Just, to, just follow it yeah, in the great comments. That'd be great. That. But you know. So uh, for me, I love the News at Penn, so um, I can't get enough of it. And again, that um, Electrical News Weekly goes out on a Monday. News at Penn's every other time in our lives. It's only once a, once a month, month maximum. Yeah. But we've also got the uh, the classic one where we get a chance to talk our way back at the comments. What do we call that one? Point, pointless view. <laughs> pointless view. <laughs> that's, that makes a lot, that's a lot of work to put together, but it's quite good fun. Yeah, yeah and, and that probably comes into... We've got some, some people that are, are staunch followers are, that are still on now or have been on this evening. We cannot get back to every comment. No, no. And some people really, really lean into the fact that you know they think they've got a great comment, which which lots of times, and it's not that we don't want to go back. We're not avoiding them. People have said to me before, you're avoiding comments and the rest of it, trying to provoke you into answering them. We've got to be quite, quite not brutal, but quite quite focused with our timing mm. comments. We've got mm. 200,000 followers at the minute, almost on yeah. TikTok, which we don't talk about. We're doing it now. We are talking about it. They are a phenomenal amount of comments in there. Yeah. Then we've got. 270 odd thousand followers on Instagram. Mm. No, so not Instagram, on YouTube, where we are now. And there's tons of comments, and we can't get back to them. And then we've got 61, 60,000 people following us on Insta. Instagram. Mm. And we've got our Facebook page, and we've got Twitter. So when, when regular people who feel that they're part of the team, which we like them to feel like they're part of the Red Army almost, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, we've got that. Is that going to be a terrible thing to say at the moment? Is it with all oh, yeah, that, yeah, that might be the bad oh, one. Just, yeah, yeah. The um, e fix the red people, community. Yeah, e fix people that like to comment lots, <laughs> which is the really catchy way of saying it. But you know, it's it's those. Yeah, so I apologise for that one. That's a, yeah, genuinely, I didn't mean that in that way. But again. Yeah, and we have to look at comments and, and answer them on their merits and try and think, well, I'm going to go in and answer 10 comments. That's 10 gone, isn't it? And, so, and sometimes, if you genuinely don't know the answer to the question, yeah. 
think we, we just don't always have time to go away and research it yep. you know and it's, it's we'd love to be able to get back to everyone who comments and you know we do we do try quite hard at that but yeah there's just times when it's it's just really difficult to keep on top of it and yeah. you know and, and and yeah we've got a almost like triage it a little bit yep. haven't we you know um Normally better at the early comments on a video. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. again, we're not even in that position yet, which would be a lovely... I'll watch people that say, we will answer the end of the video, we will answer comments for the first 15 minutes after this video is live. And I think that's lovely to be in that position where you can hit the hit the go live button. We'll come back to you laughing. In a Sorry. Minute. We'll hit the live button and then be able to spend 15 minutes in it. Maybe that's something to work towards. We are changing our style slightly on some of our videos, aren't we? Yeah, we're trying we're, to do, we're experimenting. We're, with yeah, we're mixing styles, it up. We're trying, we? to, yeah, yeah. Trying, to, trying to make it. And, and if you watch this weekend's video, you'll... Finally, I make a video with Joe, which was my dream of coming into the eFix community was to do that. We make a video together today that hopefully will be out on Saturday. And again, you'll, you'll see it in a different style when you're in different locations as well, which is good. Now, tell us yeah. what you laughed about. Sorry. It, well, first of all, thanks to everyone who's commented on the news at Penn. It, it seems like it does still have its place. Good. So that's nice. Thank you. Like for the, your feedback really is important. Um, <laughs> Abitur Jack says even his missus likes it. So that's, that's, that is praise indeed. Um, what will Gregory do if we let him oh, go? <laughs> he's, not, he's not popped up for a little while, Gregory. No. Actually, we'll have to shoehorn him into the next one. It's he's, been, he's a pain, yeah, Gregory. Yeah. But, it's, but again, it's another person, another apprentice going to be let go. Gregory, honestly, he's a nightmare. Anyway, um, <laughs> just done all my good work from today's. <laughs> Gregory the Apprentice. Um, but yeah, what, what made me giggle is we've got, we've, not only have we got Waldorf and Statler shouting down at us occasionally from up top with well, the microphone still on. Yeah, yeah, it's our fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've also got Richard commenting in the chat as well. I think he's ready for bed because he said, it's good night from Efix, then good night from me. And then little, little snoozing emojis. I think, I think he might be getting a little bored up there. Yeah, well, let's put their mics on. What have you got to say? Then you do the good night for us then. Well then, everybody. Good night. Wow. Oh, short, uh, beautiful as always. Yeah, it's enthusiasm, <laughs> isn't it? So absolutely. Well, if I'm Rick a, says it's good night, I'm it's, it's good night. It's a very different experience sitting this side of the camera. <laughs> it's like, I'm looking at the time like, oh, it's only 9.40, it could keep going for hours. Normally at this point, I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> I've loved it, but I, I want to log off now. Yeah. And again, thank you yeah, for saying that. And I do genuinely enjoy oh. this. This is, this is my favourite time, actually, to go live. Uh, we do lives through Instagram, we do lives through YouTube. Uh, we do the Apprentice Lives and all the rest of it. And we thank you for coming. But of course, there is people that need to go home. I think those people who finish at five o'clock probably want to go home. That free meal's wore itself <laughs> off now. So thank you for joining us on the live stream. And we'll see you on the 10th of August.